uh, heartily welcome to everyone uh, for this uh, sixth international conference on advances in material science. So uh, first, first of all, I, I welcome all of the participants, Professor Chang Sikha from the Pusan National University, South Korea. He is the chief guest of the inauguration function. Also, I welcome Dr. Uh, Principal Shubangi Gaudi, ma'am, uh, who is secretary of Swami Vivekananda Sikshan Samstha Kolapur. And also, I heartily welcome our principal of the college, uh, Professor Suresh S. Patil, sir. So, I will start, we will start the, fun, uh, the today's function with our Samstha prayer. So, I ask all of you to fold your hands and uh, the Samstha prayer. So, all of you, please. for uh, attending the Samstha prayer. So, uh, yes, as a convener of the sixth international conference, I'm very happy to welcome you, all of you. So, uh, just I will preface my uh, brief on the sixth ICMS 2021. So, the postgraduate department of physics of Rajay Ramrao College Zat is the first college amongst the all the affiliated college of Shivaji University Kolapur. I repeat all of you, please listen this as this is the first college among all of the affiliated colleges of Shivaji University Kolapur who organized consecutive six international conference in material science without fail from 2016 to 2021. Each year we have organized one international conference so today's conference for the sixth international conference on advances in material science, we have got total registrations of 315 and 
the extracts received are 250. So we have the keynote address. One of the keynote address will be delivered by the Professor Chang Sikha, and seven invited talks uh, will be uh, delivered in this uh, sixth international conference, and 96 oral presentation will be given by the participants. So I'm very happy to welcome you uh, in this uh, virtual online conference. So uh, the next we will publish the abstract proceeding of this conference. All the abstract received for this conference will be uh, published in the form of the soft copy of the proceeding and it is uploaded on the college website. So please visit the college website to see your abstracts. So this is the, the formal inauguration of the abstract book, I, I would say. The next, yeah, we have started from 2016, the Fujishima Terashima Award. It is a Japanese award. So they have funded us to give this Fujishima Terashima Award. So this is for securing highest number of marks in bachelor and master degree of physics uh, who are graduated from the Rajaramra College Z. So, the Ms. Pratiksha Patil, who has completed her master degree in 2019 and 20, uh, and the Ms. Ashwini Pujari, she has graduated uh, bachelor degree in 2019 and 20. So congratulate uh, Ms. Pratiksha and Ms. Ashwini in this uh, uh, function. Now, I move towards the uh, uh, principal of our Rajaramra College, uh, Honorable Professor Dr. Suresh Patil, sir, to please have a message for this conference. Thank you, Lakshya, sir. Uh, good morning, all. Am I audible? Yes, 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 sir. Good morning, all, everyone. Nan Vidyanani Shri Samstar, Yasati Sikshan Prasad, Sikshan Maharshi Dr. Bapu Ji Sarvati, Sri Swami Vivekanan Sikshan Samstar Kollapur, Raji Ramra Mahavidyala Yudhar, it's my pleasure to welcome today's chief guest of this international conference, Honorable Professor Jan Sithar from Busan National University, Busan from South Korea. I also welcome Honorable Principal Subhanji Gaudi Ma'am, president, president of this inaugural function and secretary of our Sri Swami Vivekanand Shikshan Samasta Kollapo. I also welcome Principal Dr. R. V. Sejwar, Sir, Joint Secretary, Sri Swami Yatani Shikshan Samasta Kollapo, all the eminent speakers and guests from all over the world from different institutions who have joined here to share their knowledge and work experience with the researcher. And also, I welcome all participants from the globe for this two days international conference on advances in material sciences, that is the ICMS 2021. I am very delighted to mention here, this is a consecutive sixth international conference, which is a completely conducted on the digital platform in line with the social distancing norms due to the COVID-19 pandemic situation. First four conferences were organized by offline and huge response was given by the academicians and researchers from the different institutions and countries. From last year, due to the COVID-19 pandemic disease, we are organizing online conferences and response is also so good. For this conference, more than 300 participants have registered with their research papers abstract and 185 researchers have submitted the full-length research article to this conference. I am glad to mention here, all these articles will be published in UGC listed online research journal, Macromolecule Symposia, having impact factor 0.6. On this occasion, I like to uh, I like to take the opportunity to introduce our college and our educational society. Our edu educational society Sri Swami Vivekanand Shikshan Samasta Kolapur is founded by educationalist, socialist, and freedom fighter Shikshan Maharshi Dr. Bapuji Sarunke in 1964 with the motto Jnan Vidyana Nishu Samasta Riyasati 
ಶಿಕ್ಷಣ ಪ್ರಸಾರ ಅವಾಗ ಊರ್ಗ ಫೋರ್ ಹಂಡ್ರೆಡ್ ಡಿಫ್ರೆಂಟ್ ಬ್ರಾಂಚಸ್ ಆರ್ ಸ್ಪ್ರೆಡ್ ಇನ್ ಸ್ಟೇಟ್ ಆಫ್ ಮಹಾರಾಷ್ಟ್ರ ಅಂಡ್ ಕರ್ನಾಟಕ ಇನ್ ಇಂಡಿಯಾ ಪ್ರೊವೈಡಿಂಗ್ ಎಜುಕೇಶನ್ ಆಟ್ ಪ್ರೈಮರಿ ಟು ಪಿ ಜಿ ಲೆವೆಲ್ ಎಸ್ಪೆಷಲಿ ದ ಸ್ಟೂಡೆಂಟ್ ಫ್ರಾಮ್ ದ ಎಕನಾಮಿಕಲಿ ಪುವರ್ ಆ್ಯಂಡ್ ರೂರಲ್ ಬ್ಯಾಕ್ಗ್ರೌಂಡ್ ಆಲ್ಸೋ ನಂಬರ್ ಆಫ್ ಕ್ಯಾಂಪಸಸ್ ಆರ್ ಹ್ಯಾವಿಂಗ್ ಫೆಸಿಲಿಟೀಸ್ ಆಫ್ ರಿಸರ್ಚ್ ಡಿಗ್ರೀಸ್ ಲೈಕ್ ಎಮ್ ಫಿಲ್ ಆ್ಯಂಡ್ ಪಿ ಎಚ್ ಡಿ ರಾಜೀವ್ ರಾಮ್ ರಾಮ್ ಮಹಾವಿದ್ಯಾಲಯ ಜರ್ ಇಸ್ ಒನ್ ಆಫ್ ದ ಎಜುಕೇಶನಲ್ ಕ್ಯಾಂಪಸ್ ಆಫ್ ದಿಸ್ ಸೊಸೈಟಿ ಸಿಚುವೇಟೆಡ್ ಇನ್ ರಿಮೋಟ್ ರೂರಲ್ ಆ್ಯಂಡ್ ರಾಟ್ರೋನ್ ಏರಿಯಾ ಆಫ್ ದ ಸಾಂಗ್ಲಿ ಡಿಸ್ಟ್ರಿಕ್ಟ್ ಆಫ್ ಮಹಾರಾಷ್ಟ್ರ ಸ್ಟೇಟ್ ಎಸ್ಟಾಬ್ಲಿಷ್ಡ್ ಇನ್ ನೈನ್ಟೀನ್ ಸಿಕ್ಸ್ಟಿ ನೈನ್ ದ ಕಾಲೇಜ್ ಇಸ್ ಅಫಿಲೇಟೆಡ್ ಟು ಶಿವಾಜಿ ಯೂನಿವರ್ಸಿಟಿ ಕೋಲಾಪುರ್ ದ ಕಾಲೇಜ್ ರೈಟ್ ಫ್ರಾಮ್ ಇಟ್ಸ್ ಇನ್ಸೆಪ್ಷನ್ ಹ್ಯಾಸ್ ಶೋನ್ ಅಕಾಡೆಮಿಕ್ ಎಕ್ಸಲೆನ್ಸ್ ಆ್ಯಂಡ್ ಸ್ಟೂಡೆಂಟ್ಸ್ ಹ್ಯಾವ್ ಓನ್ ಮೆರಿಟಿಯಸ್ ಅವರ್ಸ್ ಆ್ಯಂಡ್ ಹ್ಯಾವ್ ಮೆಂಟೈನ್ ದ ಟಾಪ್ ರ್ಯಾಂಕ್ ಇನ್ ದ ಯೂನಿವರ್ಸಿಟಿ ಎಕ್ಸಾಮಿನೇಷನ್ ಆಸ್ ವೆಲ್ ಆಸ್ ಇನ್ ಸ್ಪೋರ್ಟ್ಸ್ ಆ್ಯಂಡ್ ಎಕ್ಸ್ಟ್ರಾ ಕರಿಕ್ಯುಲರ್ ಆಕ್ಟಿವಿಟೀಸ್ ಕಾಲೇಜ್ ಇಸ್ ಹ್ಯಾವಿಂಗ್ ಗ್ರ್ಯಾಜುಯೇಟ್ ಡಿಪಾರ್ಟ್ಮೆಂಟ್ ಆಫ್ ಫುಲ್ ಫ್ಲೇಜ್ ಆರ್ಟ್ಸ್ ಕಾಮರ್ಸ್ ಸೈನ್ಸ್ ಆ್ಯಂಡ್ ಬಿ ಸಿ ಎ ಡಿಪಾರ್ಟ್ಮೆಂಟ್ಸ್ ಅಲಾಂಗ್ ವಿತ್ ಟು ಪಿ ಜಿ ಡಿಪಾರ್ಟ್ಮೆಂಟ್ಸ್ ಇನ್ ಫಿಸಿಕ್ಸ್ ಆ್ಯಂಡ್ ಕೆಮಿಸ್ಟ್ರಿ ವಿ ಹ್ಯಾವ್ ಆಲ್ಸೋ ಯೂನಿವರ್ಸಿಟಿ ರೆಕಗ್ನೈಸ್ಡ್ ರಿಸರ್ಚ್ ಲ್ಯಾಬೊರೇಟ್ರಿ ಟು ಪರ್ಸ್ಯೂ ಎಮ್ ಫಿಲ್ ಆ್ಯಂಡ್ ಪಿ ಎಚ್ ಡಿ ಡಿಗ್ರಿ ಶ್ರೀಮಂತ ರಾಜ್ ವಿಜಯ ಸಿಂಹ ರಾಜೇ ರಾಮ್ ರಾವ್ ಡಪ್ಪೆ ಹೇರ್ ಆಫ್ ದ ಪ್ರೀ ಇಂಡಿಪೆಂಡೆನ್ಸ್ ಜಸ್ಟ್ ಪ್ರಿನ್ಸ್ ಲಿ ಸ್ಟೇಟ್ ಡೊನೇಟೆಡ್ ಟ್ವೆಂಟಿ ಫೋರ್ ಏಕರ್ಸ್ ಲ್ಯಾಂಡ್ ಆಫ್ ಲ್ಯಾಂಡ್ ಟು ಅವರ್ ಸಂಸ್ಥಾ ಟು ಓಪನಿಂಗ್ ದಿಸ್ ಕಾಲೇಜ್ ಫಾರ್ ಟು ಬೆನಿಫಿಟ್ ದ ಸ್ಟೂಡೆಂಟ್ ಎಸ್ಪೆಷಲಿ ಗರ್ಲ್ ಸ್ಟೂಡೆಂಟ್ ಕಮಿಂಗ್ ಫ್ರಾಮ್ ಅಬೌಟ್ ಒನ್ ಟ್ವೆಂಟಿ ಫೈವ್ ಆರ್ ವಿಲೇಜಸ್ ಆಫ್ ದ ದರ್ಸಿಲ್ ಟುಡೆ ವಿ ಆರ್ ಟ್ರೈಂಗ್ ಟು ಇನ್ಕಲ್ಕೇಟ್ ದ ಮೋಟ್ ಆಫ್ ಅವರ್ ಸಂಸ್ಥಾ ಅಂಡರ್ ಮೋಟಿವೇಶನಲ್ ಆ್ಯಂಡ್ ವ್ಯಾಲ್ಯೂಯಬಲ್ ಗೈಡೆನ್ಸ್ ಆಫ್ ಆನರೇಬಲ್ ಪ್ರಿನ್ಸಿಪಲ್ ಅಭಯ್ ಕುಮಾರ್ ಜಿ ಸಾಳಂಕೆ ಹೂ ಇಸ್ ದ ಚೇರ್ಮನ್ ಆಫ್ ಅವರ್ ಸಂಸ್ಥಾ ಶ್ರೀ ಸ್ವಾಮಿ ವಿವೇಕಾನಂದ ಶಿಕ್ಷಣ ಸಂಸ್ಥಾ ಕೊಲ್ಲಾಪುರ್ ದ ಥೀಮ್ ಆಫ್ ದಿಸ್ ಇಂಟರ್ನ್ಯಾಷನಲ್ ಕಾನ್ಫರೆನ್ಸ್ ದ ಥೀಮ್ಸ್ ಆಫ್ ದಿಸ್ ಇಂಟರ್ನ್ಯಾಷನಲ್ ಕಾನ್ಫರೆನ್ಸ್ ಆರ್ ದ ಸೆಮಿ ಕಂಡಕ್ಟಿಂಗ್ ಆ್ಯಂಡ್ ಸೂಪರ್ ಕಂಡಕ್ಟಿಂಗ್ ಮಟೀರಿಯಲ್ ಫೋಟೋ ಕೆಟಾಲಿಟಿಕ್ ಮಟೀರಿಯಲ್ ಆಪ್ಟಿಕಲ್ ಆಕ್ಟಿವ್ ಮಟೀರಿಯಲ್ ಸೋಲಾರ್ ಎನರ್ಜಿ ಮಟೀರಿಯಲ್ ಗ್ಲಾಸ್ ಆ್ಯಂಡ್ ಸೆರಾಮಿಕ್ ಮಟೀರಿಯಲ್ಸ್ ಎಕ್ಸೆಟ್ರಾ ದೋಸ್ ವಿಚ್ ಆರ್ ಆಲ್ಸೋ ಮೆನ್ಷನ್ ಇನ್ ದ ಬ್ರೌಚರ್ ಆಫ್ ದ ಕಾನ್ಫರೆನ್ಸ್ ಐ ಹೋಪ್ ದಿಸ್ ಟೂ ಡೇಸ್ ಕಾನ್ಫರೆನ್ಸ್ ವುಡ್ ಹೆಲ್ಪ್ ರಿಸರ್ಚರ್ಸ್ ಟು ಶೇರ್ ಆ್ಯಂಡ್ ಎಕ್ಸ್ಪಾಂಡ್ ದೇರ್ ನಾಲೆಜ್ ಇನ್ ದ ಫೀಲ್ಡ್ ಆಫ್ ಮಟೀರಿಯಲ್ ಸೈನ್ಸಸ್ ಐ ರಿಕ್ವೆಸ್ಟ್ ಆಲ್ ದ ಪಾರ್ಟಿಸಿಪೆಂಟ್ from across the world to make use of these two days to the best of their ability i sincerely hope you will enjoy the next two days with eminent personalities and scientists before concluding my introductory speech i would like to congratulate convener of this international conference dr sanjay lakshe co convener dr ak bhosle icc coordinator of this college dr shivaji kolal and all organizing committee members for taking a lot of effort to organize this virtual international conference in very nice manner during this pandemic situation welcome again all and thank you all for your participation in this conference thank you sir over to sanjay um thank you honorable professor dr suresh s patel sir our beloved uh, in charge principal of rajaram rao college sir uh your words are really inspiring for us uh thank you so much so next so we have our chief guest of the inaugural pr- function honorable professor dr chang sik ha from the pushan pushan national university busan south korea so briefly i will introduce our today's chief guest who is very dynamic very lovable very cooperative and we have the research collaboration with him from long time and he has kindly agreed to give the keynote address in our international conference and i am
He was the professor of Department of Polymer Science and Engineering, Busan National University. From 1997 to 1998, he was a visiting scholar at Department of Chemical Engineering, Stanford University, USA. From 2010 to 2016, he worked as a director of Pioneer Research Center for Nanogrid Materials. From 2012 to 2013, he worked as a vice president of the Pusan National University. From 2013 to 15, he, is, he was worked as honorary professor at University of Queensland, Australia. From 2020-21 to present, he is the university distinguished professor at Pusan National University. So he has some professional services like he worked as an editor in chief for the micromolecular research from 2008 to 2011. He is working as a, as a editor in chief for the advances in material research from 2018 to till date. And he was he is the editor for the Asia composite interfaces from 2021 to uh, till now. He is the president of the Society of Adhesion and Interface Korea from 2013 to 2014. He was the chairman of the East Asia meeting from 2014 to 2017, IUPAC subcommittee on structure and properties of commercial polymers. He has some, he has received many honors and awards. He got Samsung Polymer Science Award, Polymer Society of Korea in April 2011. This is one of the highest, uh, uh, what, what do you say, uh, the um, award uh, we, which he received in 2011. Uh, uh, he got SBSJ International Award from the Society of Polymer Science, Japan in May 2017. He also a fellow of Korean Academy of Science and Technology from the November 2004 to till date. He is also a member of National Academy of Engineering of Korea from November 2004 to till date. So with this, uh, his research experience, he also working, uh, his research interest are multi-component polymer systems, organic inorganic hybrid nanomaterials, polyimides, superhydrophobic coating materials, periodic mesoporous organosilicas, and many. So he has touched many of the material science uh, topics and he is still currently working uh, and uh, we are really honored to be uh, have the Honorable Professor Dr. Chang Sikha as a chief guest of the function. So now I request Professor Chang Sikha to have a short message for this conference. Professor Chang Sikha. Yeah, uh, can you please unmute? Yeah, uh, you didn't unmute, sir. Can you hear me? Yeah, yeah. I, I, I am hearing okay. you, sir. Please. Okay. Okay, thank you very much, Professor Latte, for a long introduction of myself. Okay, good morning, ladies and gentlemen, and uh, other guests. Uh, as all may know, uh, the development of science and technology plays a crucial role in the upgrading of uh, relies largely on international exchanges and particularly uh, in the new era of global development, the R&D, research and development of advanced materials are listed with a top priority in many countries. I think India is no exception, like in, in Korea. In this sense, I am very happy that the large alumni college hosts an international conference on advances in material science, ICAMS 2021. I believe uh, that it is the really good time to have such a me meaningful conference, considering the rapid development of Indian science and technology in material fields. First of all, I thank the organizer, Professor Sanjay Date, who gathers experts in material science from 
Japan and China, as well as Korea and India for his great effort in organizing this interesting international event. I think it's particularly now is we had suffered the COVID-19. Okay, this is really very hard time. Even so, you did a great job. And also on the uh, personal basis, I'm very happy to tell uh, all of you that we had a long collaboration uh, in the, uh, also we had the so on the occasion of this conference, I have to tell you, thank you very much for your active cooperation with our group. I hope this conference uh, would be a good chance to exchange and share your recent research achievements and explore ways of multidisciplinary collaboration in the field of material science and technology. In particular, I wish this conference encourages and stimulate graduate students in the larger Lamlao College and the neighbor universities and research industries in uh, India. Thank you again for your great contribution to organize this wonderful conference. I wish the success of this international conference from this moment till the end of tomorrow. Okay, thank you very much. Yeah, uh, thank you, Professor Chang Sikha, for. <laughs> Your, your nice talk and uh, talking about the uh, India science and technology situation currently. And uh, uh, we, we are really happy to have a chief guest like you. Yeah. Thank you so much. So uh, next uh, we have uh, our joint secretary of finance, Sri Swami Vivekanand Sikshan Samsa Kolapur, Honorable Professor Dr. R. V. Seswar, sir. But unfortunately we are not connecting with him and uh, uh, he could not connect with this uh, conference. So uh, we are going to as the uh, president of this function, our beloved secretary, ma'am, of the Sri Swami uh, Vivekanand Sikshan Samstha Kolapur, Honorable Principal Shubangi Gaude, madam. So I welcome uh, madam to this uh, international conference and I uh, request you to have a message for the, all the participants. Please, ma'am. Uh, would you please unmute, ma'am? Oh, yeah, yeah. yeah, thank you. Okay. <clears throat> behalf of uh, Sri Swami Vivekananda Shikshan Samsa, I, uh, the principal and the secretary, uh, uh, I welcome all my participants. Before I start with my words, I first of all Go towards the memory of Shikshan Mahathir Dr. Bapuji Sanke and Samsamata Srimati Sushila Devi Sanke, and not uh, forgetting the um, extreme support of our respected uh, chairperson, Abhay Kumar Sanke. Today, we are, uh, we have uh, a big participation for the sixth international conference. Uh, wherein Rajaram Rao College has acquired the uh, honor to arrange this conference. So I thank my um, uh, uh, members of Shivaji University. I thank the respectable uh, vice uh, uh, VC, uh, Dr. Shirkesh, uh, and also the conveyor, Sanjay Lathe, for choosing uh, such an eminent and uh, what you say, interestful uh, subject or, uh, such as advancements in material sciences. I also uh, welcome the chief guest. Really, I'm happy to get uh, Honorable Hasser. Uh, as his uh, eminent personality, internationally uh, renowned personality. And uh, welcome to my campus, sir. Uh, I'm very happy to get you, sir, over here. And um, uh, namaste from India. So uh, this is an interdisciplinary uh, subject where uh, you noted down certain points that it's an era of global exchanges and um, in the need of uh, extending the comfort, um, uh, we all as a social uh, factor, as the um, a stakeholder, we are trying to bring in uh, the inventions. Uh, we are uh, uh, doing many researches on the material sciences. 
as it increases the needs and comforts of uh, the social uh, patterning the development where it offers in a very uh, different parameters if you count um, uh, every person is keen towards the comfort zone and in every field as an architect to the engineer i can say as a research person and also the inventor in of different materials uh, from nano particles to the polymer i can say there is a great advancement seen today and uh, there is uh, there are uh, uh, numerous choices kept in front of us how and when to choose what material to make the component um, look beautiful and uh, even uh, to strengthen uh, the strengthen in the index uh, is also considerable uh, during the construction phase during the infrastructural phase so i can say that uh, uh, we all are uh, in the phase of you know, research making uh, we are all in the phase of uh, practicality where the um, studies are counted where the uh, conclusions uh, which arises uh, to the various research is going on uh, at international level i also uh, feel that Uh, being a part of uh, the seminar, when I spoke to the um, honourable principal, Suresh Patel sir, where I am really happy to get him as an in-charge principal. He has uh, taken up, he has shouldered a big responsibility today for arranging uh, this kind of seminar. And when I was discussing with him, I uh, felt that I, being the science student. i am a uh, post graduate of uh, uh, zoology but even then as i was a student of chemistry physics i dealt with all the subjects i made it clear that on what basis to that speak like mm, uh, so he uh, gave me a good explanation about it but when i saw mr ha with us i was uh, really happy but i'm uh, really uh, what do you say i'm tense up i am uh, really not confident to um, just uh, talk on this topic because such an eminent personality sitting in front of me how should i discuss this thing so um, i am not a research person i am just a professor i am just a principal teaching the framework studies where we haven't touched any kind of researches but as uh, we are uh, very uh, what do you say Now, lucky to get such personalities on this dais today, and I surely feel that the uh, participation of such um, in presence of such communities, the participation in this international conference may uh, go high and may uh, go to such a um, uh, expanse that it should be discussed uh, during uh, this uh, seminar. It should be an implementable. a discussion where in um, within the two days i feel if uh, uh, i'm not wrong let me say you will be coming up with the journal you will be publishing the journal afterwards isn't it yes yes so uh, the topics which will be included in this journal will also prove as an reference to the other scientists so i'm very happy once again to be a part of the seminar i welcome all the dignitaries all the participants i'm sure we will extend uh, multiple thanks to mr ha to be a part of our seminar thank you once again thank you once again um, uh, thank you uh, secretary and principal uh, sri swami vekan shikshan sansta kolapur honorable principal subhangi gaude madam uh, madam we uh, when you came to come to the rajaramra college uh, we already discussed some things on this uh, research and uh, uh, uh and i i was not aware of uh, the how much knowledge you have about the material science and i am overwhelmed by the, uh, the, uh, the your knowledge in the material science and its application and i am very happy to ha have such a uh, talk on this uh, uh, international conference on material science so uh, in, thank you ma'am for your instead sir instead i am very happy to be a part of your seminar <laughs> because i always have see uh, because of uh, the time as i am busy with the administration 
i feel that my uh, the small part of being a student and being uh, always into the learning phase i feel very happy to get more and more knowledge but i'm not talking much today because yeah. i'm uh, i really feel that my knowledge is very short in front of all these eminent personalities instead i'm going to absorb some more knowledge through this seminar thank you thank you thank you ma'am okay. uh, thank you for your generous talk and uh, I, i know that in the last five international conferences we received a tremendous type of the help from the sansta from the yeah. uh, uh, from the principal abhay kumar sarunke sahib and uh, gaude madam we are getting a very nice help and uh, uh, we yeah. hope that in future also uh, your kind support is uh, with us thank you ma'am we all we all are proud of you all on behalf of uh, sri swami vivekananda shikshan samstha i congratulate all of you all of you thank yeah. you thank you uh, but please please uh, give me the permission because we have uh, dilha meeting yeah, yeah. Uh, of vidya samiti yeah, so please, i will leave okay yeah, thank please. you and uh, giving the best wishes for today's seminar yeah. thank you thank you ma'am thank you okay okay so and next uh, uh, it is over to the dr shivaji kular who is the iqac coordinator of uh, rajaramra college zat so i request dr shivaji kular to give the vote of thanks uh, good morning to all uh, i dr shivaji kular director of iqac rajaramra mal jalizat it is my privilege and immense pleasure to propose the vote of thanks for inaugural function of the two days sixth international conference on advances in material science organized by post graduate department of physics and internal quality assurance cell of rajaramra mahavidyalay jat firstly i am very much thankful to the chairman uh, sri abhay kumar saunke sir uh, sri swami vivekanand shikshan sansta kolhapur uh, i also thankful to principal sau subhangi gaude madam secretary sri swami vivekanand shikshan sansta kolhapur honorable principal dr yuvraj bhosle sir joint secretary administration of sri swami vivekanand shikshan sansta kolhapur Honorable Principal Dr. R. V. Chedwal, Chedwal Sir, Joint Secretary of Finance, Sri Swami Vivekananda Shikshan Sansa, Kolhapur, for uh, their unconditional support and guidance for this two-day international conference on advances in material science. Firstly, I am very much thankful to Honorable Professor Chang Si Kha, Busan National University, Busan, South Korea, for accepting our invitation as a chief guest and given valuable speech on the behalf of Department of Physics and IQAC. Of our college, I sincerely thank you. I am very much thankful to Honorable Professor Dr. D. P. Sirke Sir, Vice Chancellor, and Professor Dr. P. S. Patil Sir, Pro Vice Chancellor of Shivaji University, Kolhapur, for his warm wishes to organize this two-day international conference on advances in material science. I also thank them. This two-day sixth international conference conference on advances in material science, organized by Postgraduate Department of Physics and I. C. S. R. Prajee Ramra Malgalajar. is inaugurated by auspicious hands of honorable principal sir subhangi gaude madam secretary sri swami vivekananda shikshan sansta kolhapur also in auspicious presence of principal dr arvi chedwal sir lbs college principal arvi uh, chedwal sir lbs college satara and joint secretary of finance sri swami vivekananda shikshan sansta kolhapur are accepted our invitation and given valuable speech on current times i thank him Also, I would like to extend my sincere thanks to our principal, Professor Dr. Suresh Patil Sir, for his consistent, valuable guidance and moral support. Our patrons and members of College Development Committee are Honorable Sriman Indrajit Rajay Dapri, Sriman Chardul Rajay Dapri, Sriman Yushna Rajay Dapri, for their warm wishes to organize this two-day uh, sixth international conference. I also thank them. Also, I express my sincere thanks to dear participants, researchers, students, and teachers from all over India and abroad also for attending this uh, conference through Zoom app. I also thank Convener Dr. Sanjay Lakte, Co-Convener Dr. A. K. Bhusle Sir, Organizing Secretary uh, Mr. Rajendra Sukar, uh, Treasurer Mr. Akshay Gunle for their painstaking efforts. I also thank students of PG and UG. for department of physics technical team teaching and not teaching staff of our college finally i thank those who are directly or indirectly involved for successful organization of inaugural function of this two days sixth international conference on advances in material science by post graduate department of physics and icc of rajaramra mahavidyalay jat as the prior permission of president of this function of this conference i declare inaugural function is over thank you 
once again one and all i give message to all stay at home stay safe thank you um thank you dr shivaji kulal sir iqc coordinator of rajaramra college sir for his word of thanks now the session will start with the keynote address and our chief guest and the keynote speaker professor chang sik ha will present his uh, research talk so i request professor chang sik ha to start his keynote talk yes uh, okay let's see was my for okay here is yeah we can see it okay can you see yeah can we see? we are seeing it sir. okay no okay so good up morning again so i am really happy today and to give a talk what we have done for uh, maybe maybe more than 2 decades on this topic okay and i thank you again professor latte and the organizing committee so thank you very much so today okay i'm going to talk on the colorless and the transparent poly image okay so let's see okay so as you may know the we have now we are enjoying the many different kinds of displays okay so uh, you can see maybe long times ago we enjoyed this kind of castle lay tv and then uh, the technology moved to the uh, liquid crystal uh, display actually okay in my home still we are enjoying the lcd but uh, you know now the technology jumped into the new technology like it the organic light emitting uh, devices and things like that so when you see uh, this kind of some new paradigm of the display uh, we are i mean we need this kind of very very new brand new technology uh, in other words the flexible substrate so uh, before this time i mean the when you when you i mean the uh, enjoy the crt or lcd you I think you might not I mean, uh, expect uh, this kind of the flexible display, but now uh, we can enjoy this kind of a flexible display, like the flexible smartphone and the flexible monitor and things like that. So this is a really new paradigm of the technology. Okay. So uh, now this, as I told you, uh, this is a really very advanced technology of this kind of the uh, display. But uh, as you may uh, see from this cartoon, so we have to uh, many different okay uh, technological, I mean, uh, bottleneck or some uh, necessary technology, uh, including the development of really uh, very bright and good emitting materials. So even though this kind of the emitting materials can be organic, I mean, low molecular weight organic materials or uh, sometimes the polymeric materials also can be used for electro optic materials. Even though you have this kind of very beautiful and uh, very, I mean, the uh, highly efficient organic, I mean, the uh, emitting materials or some electro optic materials, but in order to realize this kind of flexible substrate, you need the flexible I mean, substrate here. So if you use some uh, glass, for example, so you, you don't, you cannot make this kind of flexible substrate. So I dare say only polymers, polymers can be a good candidate to realize this kind of flexible substrate. Okay, so this is general, I mean, the uh, outline of the uh, devices. So uh, we are talking about this kind of flexible substrate. Okay, so usually the devices, I mean, uh, if you have the, your smartphone phone and also your laptop computer, whatever, uh, this is all, I mean, uh, in your ITO, in other words, indium tin oxide coated glass, you know, okay, the glass is used. And then if we develop a kind of the polymer to be used for the flexible substrate, and it uh, may nicely working. Okay? So this is the, uh, what kind of technology or materials are needed okay, to develop this uh, flexible display. Okay? So, uh, the first generation of the uh, flexible substrate, as you uh, can see from this slide, uh, maybe uh, if you make this kind of curved state, curved, then okay, it's one, the first generation of flexible display. 
And then this is a second generation, and this could be used for wearable devices. And uh, this is the third generation, the roll. I mean, the, uh, this, I mean, not batch style, but it's continuous processing. So whatever the generation, uh, as you can see, uh, the port, I mean, the substrate should be, uh, be flexible like this one. Okay. So this is generally uh, the general, I mean, the image of the flexible display. Okay. So uh, this is the technology development, uh, development trend. So uh, Samsung, as you know, the, the one very big company, Korean, I mean, the electric mobile company, the Samsung Galaxy. And also uh, this is, I mean, uh, kind of the foldable phone, iPhone, and other, I mean, the phone. So whatever the company, this Chinese company, Huawei, but anyway, and also including the wearable device, as you can see here, and then all technology, I mean, in all devices, we, uh, we want, or we should have this kind of flexible, flexible substrate. So as you know, the flexible substrate or the bentable or foldable substrate must be used. Okay? So this is the key technology uh, to develop this kind of new foldable or the flexible display okay and then uh, in the sense if you consider the market in the world around the world and you can see lots of I mean the expanding trend in the market so this is 2014 and this is this year 21 and you can see this is a million dollars okay and this is sale and shipment as you can see this is a really exponentially I mean uh, increase okay to use the flexible display I think okay uh, this kind of trend okay, becomes much, much, I mean, the more steep, more steep is like this one. So you see. So this means again, the importance of the uh, flexible display because people like you and me, the people, and now the, in particular young generation, are people like this kind of portable or flexible display. So this is the, I mean, around the, the trends around the world. Okay? And then we have to consider the, the what what we should do i mean like at the material scientists and engineers what we should do and the, what and in which field could we i mean the uh, could we i mean the com contribute so this is our i mean the uh, task or homework okay so as i told you in order to develop the flexible substrate like our flexible display and somebody should develop and brand the new and electro optic materials and which can bright, I mean, emit very bright colors and also with a very long time uh, lifespan, lifetime, things like that. And also we should develop, I mean, excellent encapsulation technology and to make the device for, to be used for a long time. And also you need some cathode and anode, like, I mean, if you consider the anode material, for example, right now, uh, most of the, I mean, any of the material is ITO, as you all of you know, is the Indian tin oxide. But nowadays, other, I mean, any of the materials are developing by the, I mean, the uh, months by months or day by day by day. So every time, so okay, somebody are working on the development of the uh, conducting, I mean, any of the material. But we, are, I am the polymer guys, so I am. Uh, working on the development of the uh, substrate material from the polymer here, the, po the polymer substrate. Okay. So here, uh, oh, this is okay. We wrote this review paper in 2002, uh, uh, 2010, maybe almost 10 years ago. So uh, if you see this article, the polymeric the polymers for flexible display from a material selection to device uh, application. If, uh, the progress in polymer science, and uh, if you're interested, and uh, if you read this article, and you can see the idea, and the general idea, okay, what are important in for flexible display. Okay, please refer to the paper. Okay, so let's go. So uh, that's that's why the, the our polymer guys like me wanted to develop the new uh, polymers or the very efficient polymers uh, to be used for a substrate for polymer, I mean, the flexible display. Okay? So here, okay, so it is the polymer substrate. Uh, actually, why, why people like to use the polymer for the flexible substrate? As you may know, the lightweight, 
this bed light and also the possibility is wonderful and yes the surely the flexibility is wonderful and also and other properties like top press transfers are all and very well and we have to consider money the low cost is also very important okay uh, issue but the polymer cannot make i mean everything so any material has sometimes very good point and but sometimes okay they have uh, inherent weaker point one of the weaker point of the polymer substrate is okay sometimes we have to solve this kind of problems low i mean the poor dimension stability and the similar stability and the chemical resistance and the corpse and similar explosion and things like that so this is the among the challenges in polymer circuit then if you consider this kind of advantages or some challenges and what kind of polymer would be the best okay so this is the I mean, key point to start the development of the uh, polymer substrate okay so here so actually uh, this is taken from the my I mean, review article in progress in polymer science here uh, 2008 so as you can see here not many people not many polymers can be I mean, effective for polymer substrate because the in order to be used for flexible substrate or electro optical devices they should I mean, keep the integrity at high temperature that the thermal stability is one of the key I mean, elements okay so not all the polymers can be used only a highly thermal stable that can be used okay? that's why there are few only several polymers can be used okay? like uh, uh, poly uh, ethylene nephilene and uh, uh, polyethylene and uh, polyethylene and things like that so actually uh, in the initial stage to be to develop the flexible substrate uh, usually polyethylene terephthalate because this is you, you know the uh, used for OHP I mean the optical uh, transparent I mean the uh, paper sheet so but you know the the uh, summer stability of PET I mean is very very low so actually uh, this could not be this cannot be used for the actual I mean the practical the uh, monitor or the display so uh, many other I mean some stable polymers were, uh, have been developed so you can see polycycle olefin and uh, poly is ketone and the polyimide okay so today I'm uh, focusing on the polyimide okay here so uh, we I mean summarize summarize the minimum property requirements of polymer substrate so in order to be used for flexible display so actually the uh, if we use the, actually your polymers for the the practical or commercial uh, monitor or display maybe this property should be higher or better uh, than this requirement but at least if you develop in the in the university or level to level to scale the fundamental or the basic requirement require the property like this so for example the polymer should be transparent so uh, they have at least higher than 85 percent of the transparency and here uh, they have at least okay uh, have uh, they can maintain okay up to up operating uh, temperature over 150 century so as i told you pt polyethylene terephthalate is excellent transparent material but the TG is around 80 degrees, so they cannot be used to be for flexible subject. Demonstration is okay, but not for practical point of view. And, and also, uh, the, the polymer should have very low water vapor transfer rate, and also if you coat ITO in the tinoxide on the polymer, and the, the surface resistance should be also very low. And also, they have the excellent flexibility, like so what kind of polymers can i mean uh, uh can i mean keep this kind of requirement okay so uh, it is one example why the thermal stable polymer is quite i mean necessary so for example as i told you this pt film and this polyethylene and naphthalene okay? so the tc is around the, uh, over 130 140 degree but this is also a PT is all purely around the 80 degrees. So you can see the first time actually no problem, but if you use this one for uh, repeated time, so one time, two time, and the high temperature, as you can see, over a, one, 180, 200, and uh, this means the high uh, dimensional stability 
So they have the, the dimension stability significantly, I mean, deteriorated, okay? But how about the PN? No problem, okay? That's why we need this kind of highly somatic stable polymers, okay? Okay, so as I told you, uh, if we consider some uh, candidate polymers from PT, PN, and polycarbonate polymer, okay, see, this is a coefficient of thermal expansion and the trans uh, transparency and the water absorption and solvent resistance and things like that. Now this is, I mean, uh, the triple phi B is, okay, excellent properties. But as you can see, okay, PT transparency is excellent. But the, uh, this, I mean, some other properties, even so, something not so good. And here, the poly with the polycarbonate and the polyester sulfate is wonderful, but uh, solvent resistance is very poor, so you cannot use it. Okay, please look at this one, polyimide. The most of the properties are excellent. In, I mean, except the uh, transparency and uh, the moist absorption. So this is really inherent the weaker point of the polyimide. But if we solve this problem, the transparency and the low water absorption, and I mean polyimide is the best polymer, the best polymer uh, among any other polymer surface. Because you know the polyimide, uh, has the highest glycerization temperature among all the polymers. Okay? Usually, we can maintain their integrity up to uh, at least 350 degrees or 400 degrees. So it is a wonderful polymer. But you have to consider polyimide as inherent, very low transmission, transmission. Then you may ask, okay, and how polyimide can be used as a flexible surface if you compare with other polymers? So our answer, yes, no problem. We can solve this one. Okay, so that's why uh, actually the polyimide is, is already have been used for a long time from 1960 and uh, uh, from this year, because this is a really highly small stable polymer and also a highly good chemical resistance and uh, very good mechanical properties. So actually polyimide was already uh, used for aerospace, because spatial shuttle ship and the semiconductor, and already is also is used for LCD, liquid crystal display. Actually, in all that most or over you display including use my mobile phone but then we use this kind of I mean the, the plan So uh, maybe you have clicked something wrong way, but uh, can you again once again share the screen and start it? Yes, yes. Sometimes, sometimes in the international conference <laughs> we have this kind of problem. Okay, now it's okay. <laughs> yes, 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 yes. Sir. Okay, okay. So uh, now so we want to use the polyimide. We want to make a transparent and colorless polyimide. That's okay what we have done for a long time in my history, in my laboratory, okay? Okay, let's see. Oh, okay, here. So, actually, actually, uh, here, so actually we are working on the polyimide for a long time. Uh, this is another review paper in progress of polymer science. Okay, here, actually, because the polyimide has excellent mechanical and thermal stability, so they're using in this kind of, I mean, the airplane and the engineering part, and as I told you, all of this polyimide is used in your, in your, I mean, the display, including your mobile phone. Mm -hmm. But as I told you, they have polyimide, they have always this kind of yellowish and brown color. Why? As you know, the chemical structure like this one, the polyimide can be synthesized from, by mixing dianhydride and diamide, 
and uh, and uh, you make the polyamine exit and the kicking out the water and finally you make this kind of polyamide. Okay? So if you see the chemical structure, this is all aromatic links. So this is really highly semi stable and mechanical stable. But because they have lots of I mean here and O and O like this one, so they have lots of electron acceptor and donor. So uh, they have inherently charge transfer complex formation here. So because of the charge transfer complex formation, they have always uh, this kind of yellowish and brown color. Okay? But if you use this kind of I mean the matrix for I mean, airplane or engineering part or display, it, it at, at that time it doesn't matter. But if you use want to use the polyimide for flexible substrate, then should be colorless and transparent. Okay. So here, then how to make the transparent and colorless polyimide okay, with balanced thermal properties and optical properties. Okay? So the design and synthesis is one of the key uh, technology in this kind of in uh, to developing uh, transparent substrate using polyimide. Okay? So this is another our review paper in Macworld Club, Chemistry and Pages. Okay? That's the end. So if you're interested and if, uh, if you want more I mean, uh, knowledge, then please report to this paper. Okay? So here, just a very simple simple um, idea. Okay, so this is the general um, category of polyimides. As I told you, usually most of polyimides are aromatic polyimides, but uh, they are not transparent. Okay, so uh, sometimes we are developing then aromatic. So if you make the poly aliphatic polyimide, and then if we reduce the aromaticity, then uh, we can make the polyimide to be transparent. Okay, this is the one idea. Okay, the aliphatic diamine and aromatic dye and high and we can make the uh, colorless but you have to consider it all okay. so you have to consider and when developing the uh, transparent polyimide okay. so how to enhance the optical transparency polyimide so you have to use the monomer to produce, to be able to produce polyimide, okay? So this one, the monomer. And you have to use, for example, alicyclic or non-aromatic by anhydride. Or sometimes you have to use some electron withdrawing group like uh, uh, CF3 and SO2. This is wonderful uh, material to reduce the charge stress complex formation. Okay? And also sometimes during polymerization, and during film preparation, so when you have the special care, and then the color is, the color of polymer can be reduced, okay? Okay, here, as I told you, this is a general, I mean, general idea, okay? So if you introduce this kind of electron withdrawing group, including uh, CF3, actually this is commercial, already commercial, I mean, uh, color is polymer. And uh, if you introduce CF3, CF3, and also, other one, okay. and then you can make very uh, even the aromatic group, but uh, this reduce the charge transfer complex formation. Then you can get color polyimide. Okay. And here, as I told you, if we use any cyclic dianhydride, okay, some some monomer uh, is available commercially, and some monomer you should be synthesized. But anyway, they are uh, apparently they all no aromaticity, they're all alicyclic or aliphatic. So this is the key idea to make the transparent polyimide. Okay. So in that sense, uh, we also uh, I mean, contributed to develop transparent and colored polyimide for flexible surgery. So the key idea is how to reduce the charge trans complex formation. Okay. So this one, let's make the aliphatic dianhydride or well, let's synthesize brand new aliphatic diamine. And also introduce pronated or other halogenated group. Okay. And uh, from this kind of idea, we synthesize a new dianhydride or diamine, or sometimes we, I mean, made the hybrid with inorganic nanofilers okay, to enhance the properties of this one, transfer polyimide 
to more degree. Okay. Okay. So this is our concept. So how? What is the the the, the end of my uh, presentation time? How many minutes do I have? Yes, yes, you have the time. So please go ahead. Uh, no problem. Yeah. Okay. So as I told you, uh, the finally developed polymer should have the highly op optical transparency, and also it should be a high summer stability, and also they should have high mechanical property. But the most important is cost. So even though the fluorine is already commercially available, but you know the fluorine created the material usually expensive. So uh, we want to use non fluorinate or the least fluorine content the material. Then finally, we can we could develop colors flexible and polyimide. Okay. So here, so I give you just I already I mean talked about the the most of the uh, basic idea to you, but. Uh, let me give you just some examples of our results. Okay, so first we try to make the alicyclic or aliphatic polyimide so like this, one, so aliphatic polyimide. So at this time, even though we have to we have to sacrifice some uh, mechanical properties, but anyway, uh, we could make the we could uh, make the enhanced transparent uh, polyimide. Okay, and here, and uh, let's see here. Uh, we can improve the solubility and also we can improve the uh, transparency with the keeping and other, other properties. Okay? So this is the idea. And for example, uh, just by using one kind of dianhydride. Okay? And we can, if we use 14 different kinds of dianhydride from uh, elementary group and the alicycli and also aliphatic, and we can produce 14 so this is, I mean, and then we can make uh, 14 different kinds of the transparent and colored polyimide. Okay. And you can see, you can combine very easily because polyimide is very simple chemistry, just by mixing dianhydrate and diamine. So if you change this one in another uh, diamine or dianhydrate, you can make, I mean, many, many different uh, polyimide. Okay. So easy, you can see the TG of that kind of the uh, transparent or colorless polymer, the TG is at least the, the, the minimum, the least one is 211, 215. And also uh, the transparency, you can see the transparency, some uh, transparency um, reaches 95%. Wonderful. And also, uh, if you, we, we make, okay, we made uh, actually the organic light emitting devices, but in our lab, by using the newly synthesized polyimide and it's nicely working, show the uh, this kind of I mean, the light emitting I mean, the performance. Okay? And that this is also uh, bentable or flexible. So, okay, so this is the idea. And then, if we, I mean, the coated ITO onto the color, uh, our sensor polyimide, and then you can see, even though, okay, the transparency is not so good, but the situ is not so good, but it's okay because okay, we made this one in the laboratory. So when you made if we make this kind of the uh, devices in a company with very good percent like Samsung or LG, and then the this kind of I mean the data should be much much better. But you know the in the university laboratory, uh, the we do not have any good encapsulation uh, equipment. Even so they have a very good, very good uh, data. I mean, sheet resistance and the transparency and the whatever. So this guy, that's why uh, this I mean, paper could be uh, published in advanced materials, okay? Okay, so let's see. And also uh, we published, okay, another type of the polyimide, halogenate polyimide. So this is okay. We introduced the chlorinated CL instead of, instead of the chlorinated CF3. So if we introduce CL, yeah. You can see uh, there is excellent transparency, rentability, or flexibility. Like this. Also, sometimes we are we can make this kind of copolymer with other polymer, including polynorobinin, because polynorobinin has excellent transparency. Also, 
Let's go. And also, uh, okay, this is already thermal stability. This uh, weight load is high and the TG is excellent, excellent transparency and excellent thermal stability, like this one. Over 90%, you can see. The 90% you can see. So this is one idea. We could developing new, I mean, color is a transparent polyamide by using brand new dianhydride or diamide. And then also in the same series, we developed a new fully aliphatic polymer from an aliphatic dianhydride with preparazin. So this file will take some step. And finally, uh, we made a brand new, brand new dianhydride here, PDA. So here, we I mean, introduced this one. And then dianhydride, but uh, by I mean, introducing um, this group, PDD, and uh, we could reduce the charge trust complex formation. And then what the result? Okay. And then by using the new brand new uh, dianhydride and by mixing diamine, okay, we could make a six different polyamide. As you can see, this is mechanical property and, uh, and transparency over okay, here. Even though not the over 80, 90%, but the transparency over 80, 80% or 85%, not so bad. And then uh, the make the summer stability also not so bad. And and this 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 polyimide is a really interesting property. They, even the polymers emit light. That means this can be used for flexible substrate. And additionally, they can be as emitting material. It's very interesting. Okay. And then by using that kind of mean a new brand new. Uh, polyamide, we can make this kind of polyamide, okay? Okay, let's see. Uh, because we have a limited time, I can skip this one. And also, sometimes, uh, because as I, we already know, we only know some polymers can be used to portray colors and transparent substrate, but some polyamide can emit the light by themselves. So by using this idea, and we can make semiconducting polyamide, okay? Okay, let's go. And we, Actually, we made the uh, device like this one. And also, uh, we make the trans aromatic polyamide derived the other, I mean, the uh, diamond. Okay, so we are all like this one, okay? Very good, transparent, and colorless material. Okay, the final. So, uh, this is very simple and but the very key idea. If you, I mean, uh, synthesize a brand new, fully aliphatic or the alicyclic polyamide from brand new diamond, di I mean the uh, anhydride, and then we can I mean, realize the flexible support EMI okay? to having balanced optical properties and also other superior super I mean, properties. Okay, and then uh, this work was done by our colleagues and the, the money from the National Research Foundation. Thank you very much. Thank you very much. Yeah, yeah. Uh, thank you, Professor Chang Sikha, for your excellent uh, keynote talk uh, on the uh, uh, colorless and transparent polymers and uh, we really overwhelmed by the, your knowledge in the polymer science and uh, the synthesis design and of the polymers for the flexible polymer substrates so yeah we hope for uh, up to 2030 we are hoping for the flexible display and uh, the use of polymers in the aeroplanes uh, Yes, I request some of the participants to ask the question on the uh, the topic which was given on the uh, colorless and uh, conductive. Hey, I welcome. Um, so in the chat box, I got uh, 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 three questions. So I'm reading it uh, uh, for you, Professor, uh, so that, yeah. Uh, Dr. Vijay Savant is asking, whether graphene sheet based materials can be used in future for display applications? No, yes, yes, why not? Mm -hmm. um, actually, as of today, the graphene is widely used for production in Samsung in Korea. It's already commercialized. I see, I see. Yes, mm -hmm. why not? It's a wonderful yeah. property. Yes. And I also, see. we uh, used to, we synthesize the polyimide and the grape in the hybrid material. Uh -huh. It's excellent property. Mm -hmm. Yeah, yeah, sure. Yes, it is. Yeah. Uh, the second question asked by the Dr. Kushal Mude. So he is asking, sir, can you suggest some smart materials which can 
prefer which can be preferred for the flexible display yes uh, if you do not like a polyamide like me and you can use some other polycyclic olefin pco uh -huh. polycyclic olefin is also another wonderful candidate polycyclic olefin i see okay okay yeah, so, it's wonderful. I mean, the uh, okay. candidate. Uh, so the next one is the Dr. Mahendra Kavale. So he is saying that uh, why the glass transition temperature is greater than 300 degrees Celsius, he is asking. That means why the thermal stability important? Why it is the Or the why glass, it is high? <laughs> why it is yeah. very high, 300 degrees Celsius. It's very simple. Because of the chemical structure, as mm -hmm. you can see, they are all okay, basically they have very, I mean, aromatic structure like this one, aromatic structure like this one. So, you know, the aromatic polymer, they all aromatic. So, that's why they want to very high summer stability, high TG. Yes. Or, so you know, the I just want to give you just one example. Mm -hmm. Maybe you have some graduate students. So, uh, mm -hmm. for your graduate students, it's very simple. It's just very simple. Here, why this kind of all thermally stable? Okay, here they all highly aromatic here. Yeah, that's why. Yeah, the, at least the TG is over 150 or 200. Mm -hmm. And polymer here, they all aromatic. Mm -hmm. Okay, very simple. I see. Yeah. I see. Uh, so next question from the Aslam Tamburi. Uh, he he's saying that nice talk, sir. I want to ask the question, what about solubility of aromatic polyimides? Aromatic polyimides do not have any solubility. Yeah, but that's why we incorporate some of the alicyclic or aliplastic to increase solubility. Actually, this aromatic polyimide cannot be dissolved in any solvent. It's mm -hmm. thermoset. It's thermoset. No I solvent. Mm -hmm. But to make uh, this polyimide, we have to make the, the polyamic exit, the intermediate state. Yeah, here. Here, this is soluble. The final polymer cannot be dissolved. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Mm -hmm. uh, so, the, the, I, I will take the last question so that yeah. uh, Dr. Sushant Patil is asking, does the color of these polyimides tunable like the electrochromic materials? Yes, it can be used. It can be used. If we introduce some electrochromic, I mean, the moiety or any uh -huh. functional group, uh -huh. and actually somebody are working on uh, electrochromic polyimide, why mm -hmm. not? I yes, see. you can do. Yeah. Uh -huh. Yeah, uh, the many questions are coming, but uh, because of the Thank time, you, yeah, uh, I should not have to take too much, but uh, I will share your email ID with, uh, can I share your email ID with the participants? Yes. So that they can ask the question to you <laughs> by email. Oh, yeah, here, here, <laughs> the last one, the pattern. Yeah, yeah. Uh, thanks once again, Sir. Professor Chang Sikha for your wonderful keynote talk. And uh, I hope Thank you, you could, very much. <laughs> I hope you could come to our college uh, uh, offline <laughs> in coming yes, years. after COVID-19. <laughs> <laughs> Thank yes. you very much. Yeah. Yeah. Thank you for joining. Thank you. Yeah, thank you very much. Yeah. Yeah. So uh, we have the next speaker. Uh, uh, I, I will just unmute them. So we have Professor Gongu Zhang. Uh, Professor Gongu Zhang, can you listen to me? Yeah, 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 yeah. I can hear you. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Nice yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah, yeah. to see you, uh, Professor Gongu Zhang. Uh, uh, so, uh, Professor uh, Gong Yu Zhang will be delivering a lecture, uh, today's invited talk, on the, the cleavage and the functionalization of C triple C bond of unions. Um, so, uh, Professor Gong Yu Zhang is working in the Department of Orthopedics, uh, Peking University, Xiaogong Hospital, Beijing, uh, in People's Republic of the China. Um, Unfortunately, I could not uh, got your uh, uh, CV, 
so I am very sorry I could not say too much right now. So uh, uh, yeah, so Professor Zhang, can you uh, can you um, uh, start your uh, talk? Yes, yeah, yeah, yeah. 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 Uh, in fact, I I have changed my my topic today. Uh, uh, with the the let me talk. You you can uh, see the uh, yeah. Can you see the PPT? Yes, uh, I can see it. Okay, okay. Uh, today my talk is about the sixty bond activation and mm -hmm. the synthesis of uh transformational containing molecules. Okay. Uh, in fact, today my topic is somehow like uh, uh, organic synthesis methodology, but uh, but also I'm apply application of my method to synthesize some uh, material interesting. Uh, uh, okay. Uh, so first of all, I, I want to thank the committee uh, members give me a chance to give a talk here. And uh, 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 okay, uh, let's start. Yeah. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Um, because uh, I, I previously I, I do I did some postdoc in US and in Spain. And uh, in 2018, I joined Henan University, and uh, uh, in this about two years, uh, doing some uh, organic synthesis methodology. And uh, uh, my topic is mainly the cis bond activation and also synthesis some uh, floral containing molecules. Uh, in this slide, this is my PhD and the postdoc work. They are mainly uh, on the uh, synthesis of uh, uh, hydrocycles through CH activation and also synthesis some P type uh, dopants for material chemistry and also some synthesis some chiral uh, CF3 containing molecules. And uh, um, uh, when, when, when I started John Helen University, uh, right now we are focusing on the CH activation. My first work is a uh, uh, couple of Mediate uh, the isolated company of uh, ELOs uh, where CC bound activation and uh, medical conditions. And we know uh, CC bound activation is right now the topic of organic chemistry. And uh, the CC bound activation of ketones has been realized uh, last century. However, the CC bound activation of ELOs has not re realized until the uh, Professor Dong's work, and they use uh, ruthenium, uh, rhodium as a, ruthenium as a, the, the catalyst to realize that the uh, cumulative uh, intramolecular cis bond formation to synthesis of icons. So uh, before this this work, I want to introduce some uh, for containing uh, aliphatic group here. And we want to realize some uh, synthesis, uh, some uh, floral containing icons. But finally, we, we realized uh, uh, the isolated company between two uh, enos to synthesis of the dying. And uh, I use the some metric amount of copper, copper one uh, metal. We can realize the uh, Intermolecular disallocating of you know to say the uh, one three days, you can see the substrate scope is is broad, uh, with different substitution on the burn ring, uh, benzene ring, and also uh, some uh, polycycles, and so some hydrocycles, and some olefin uh, substitutions, substituted uh, um, enones, and uh, some. Not only the a home cross company, also are some cross company reactions. And uh, next, uh, we we just uh, test the possibility for some other groups uh, attached to uh, other set of the company group. And uh, this the scope is also broad. Then we did some mechanism study, and that. Uh, uh, Finally, we try to send in some uh, molecular material chemistry interesting molecules, some like a self self in bridge the uh, polycycles. Uh, they have some uh, interesting optical 
uh, properties. Uh, this is uh, the first work. Uh, in the second work, uh, we, we, we realize the 3 plus 2 annulation of CEP3 ketamines by uh, rhenium catalysis. We got CEP3 uh, containing amino hydrocycles and polyimide. A period is the 3 plus 2 annulation uh, through such activation have been realized by Ackerman, uh, Kulinovo, and Takao, and one group, but uh, owing to the uh, strong electron wind drawing group effect of CF3. So the CF3 ketamines uh, involved in the 3 plus 2 annihilation have not been realized. In this work, we, we realize this 3 plus 2 circulation. Uh, under the catalysis of rhenium. This is the South Street, a uh, subsidiary scope of the uh, 3 plus 2 uh, cyclization. You can see um, for the amine part, different substitute the uh, amines uh, is well to well tolerate to give the uh, product in moderate to high yield. And the ketone part, uh, the, the, the subscript is also broad. And some, uh, some contain some hydrocircles, some laughing, um, laughing derived ketone or the daketone. This is uh, uh, the subscript on the other side. As a satellite, we can see it's a very, uh, very broad scope on this side. This is a mechanism study at the top experiment. And uh, this is also a mechanism study. And uh, uh, this is a, a, grand, a grand scale synthesis. We can synthesis it over the uh, product in one gram, more than one gram scale. And also some uh, application of the reaction uh, to the revelation of the product to, um, to the Accelerated product or to oxidize the product to uh, this kind of compound. Also, we uh, what we also application of our methodology to derive deletion of some natural products, uh, somehow like uh, uh, myrtle of also pyraldehyde and also uh, tagophilo. This kind of natural product that can be uh, transform it, uh, transform it to uh, the derivatives. We also uh, try to use uh, this di uh, diamine to senses of the polymers, uh, like uh, 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 Professor Chang talked about the, the, the polyimide. This kind of polyimide have some uh, interesting optical properties. They have some uh, absorption at uh, about uh, uh, 250 uh, this area. The, the third one, so uh, the third work is uh, the synthesis of uh, beta CF3 beta amino acids with an yielding backbone by rhenium catalyzed 3 plus 2 uh, annulation. And uh, this kind of product is very interesting because uh, flor flor containing amino acid is very important to sense some uh, uh, biological interesting molecules. This kind of uh, this is uh, catalytic system is similar to the second one. Use uh, the catalytic amount of uh, uranium catalyst and, and uh, high temperature. You can realize the three plus two stabilization. This is substrate scope. You can see um, the scope is broad. With different substitution on the uh, uh, benzene ring, and uh, also uh, on the on the kidney part, the substitute also broad. With that image, the, the, you can get the two products because of the uh, selectivities. Uh, this is uh, uh, the, the substitute code scope on the uh, alkene part. You can see something. Uh, Asterisk is uh, tolerated, but some other uh, uh, alkanes with the cyanide group, amide, or sulfine is not so tolerated. We can't get the product. 
uh, this uh, application, we can realize the ground cycle systems also uh, transformation of the uh, ester group to alcohol or oxidize the product to to uh, to the amine product, or we can cleave the PMP product group to free amine. This is transformation. This is the micronutrient study. for your There might be the issue from uh, his side, Professor Zhang's side, uh, because the internet might be weak. Uh, but uh, we still wait for uh, some time uh, to let his uh, connection goes well. Uh, Professor Zhang, uh, Professor Zhang, can you listen me? Uh, I think the connection might have. Uh, broken uh, and we'll just wait for another um, one or two minutes uh, uh, whether Professor Jang can once again rejoin and continue his talk. So please uh, uh, I, I request you to just uh, keep some patience for one minute and let's see uh, whether he is joining back. I also ask the participants to uh, please keep your videos off so that uh, others should not have to be uh, disturbed. I think Professor Jang, um, Professor Jang, I cannot, I cannot listen you. Uh, maybe you can listen me, but uh, your, your, your voice is not reaching to us. Oh, I can see you. I can see you. Yeah, yeah. Okay. Okay. Uh, please continue. Uh, it was some internet problem, I think. Oh, oh. Okay. yeah. Please share the screen once again and uh, please continue. Uh, Professor Jan. Professor Jang, uh, is it everything okay uh, from your side? Uh, maybe the, the, the connectivity might be the problem because our internet and, and the participants' internet is working uh, well, uh, but Professor Jang's internet might have the problem. Yeah, he is sharing the screen.
uh, Professor Zhang, we, uh, we cannot uh, listen you. Uh, Professor Jan, uh, are you getting me or? Yeah, uh, to the participants, uh, uh, yeah, the, these kinds of disturbance happens in the online international conferences. If uh, the uh, internet uh, connectivity uh, loses, uh, so yeah, j just another one or two minutes we will wait for professor jang to reconnect uh, with his inter internet connection um, yeah uh, just please wait uh, what about next speaker oh yeah so yes uh, his uh, message came that uh, yes uh, we will start with the next speaker with uh, next speaker and uh, please join later later okay uh, so uh, we have so professor jang has the connectivity issue so uh, once he resolve uh, the connectivity issues then he will uh, join after the uh, next speaker finishes uh, his her talk okay uh, so our, our next uh, speaker is uh, deep lakshmi uh, dr deep lakshmi ponama so uh, I, i'm just asking her to unmute uh, and uh, uh, dr deep lakshmi ponama can you listen me yes i can i can uh, thank you thank you dr uh, deep lakshmi ponama um, the earlier uh, a speaker has lost his connection uh, so so that we are continuing with the next uh, speaker uh, uh, you can share it uh, right now uh, your ppt um, you can continue uh, um, uh, as the dr deep lakshmi ponama has uh, shared her um, ppt i'm just briefly uh, introduce her to all the participants uh, so dr deep lakshmi ponama is currently a research associate at Center for Advanced Materials in Qatar University, Doha, Qatar. Um, so she, uh, recently, uh, the top 2% scientists were declared by the Stanford University. So she has been recognized in the top 2% scientists according to the global list compiled by the Stanford University in 2020. So actually from 2015 to till date, so she is working as a postdoctoral researcher at Qatar University. Uh, she got her doctoral degree in April 2015 uh, in material science from the Deakin University, Australia. And her doctoral thesis was based on the development of high performance material based on smart elastomer, elastomer nan nanocomposites. Uh, uh, before that, she completed her master in uh, ma master in chemistry uh, with second rank in from the University of Kerala from in May two thousand six. Um, this uh, uh, figure is striking because she got the uh, citations of more than three thousand five hundred in Google Scholar. If you search her name, uh, you can see this uh, number, huge number, I will say, uh, with H index of 32 okay this this shows the the quality of the researcher uh, the h index and the citations shows the uh, the quality of the research work done by the candidate so uh, he, she has the uh, uh, journal publication more than 105 book chapters she has written 18 book chapters uh, she has uh, nine books uh, written uh, she got the awards like many oral presentation and uh, best poster presentation awards. So best research supervisor award for the uh, Albara programs for three consecutive cycles. Uh, she got this uh, best supervisor award. Uh, she also got many awards and projects and grants 
So uh, currently, she has she is the lead investigator in RRC two one one four into twenty twenty from the Qatar National Research Fund Fund Qatar for the work for the smart quick fix shutter for disinfecting scan glass in biometric scanners. Uh, her next funding is uh, she is mentor in UREP. Okay, I'm not uh, reading this uh, code. In 2019, also again the funding agency from the Qatar National Research Fund Qatar, and the work was on the piezoelectric nano generators based on PVDF metal oxide nano composites for self powering devices. The another funding she got, and she was the mentor from the Qatar National Research Fund Qatar, uh, and the topic was designing flexible nano generators for sustainable energy harvesting. Um, I, I know this is very brief uh, CV of Dr. Deepalak Smiponama, and uh, I'm not taking too much time on uh, getting this CV, but. Uh, uh, you can uh, go on searching her on the internet and yeah you, you will find more of, about her so uh, now i ask uh, i request uh, dr deepalak sinponama for uh, uh, to to carry on her invited talk thank you dr sanjay thank you so much for your kind introduction so today i'll be speaking about the fibers and media filters for effective separation of oil water mixtures I'd like to say that I, I was working on this particular field for the past three years on uh, different polymers and different polymer nanocomposites, different production methods, different synthesis routes. The final goal was to separate oil and water from oil water uh, mixture or oil water emulsions. So today the contents of my presentation includes brief introduction about the problem, synthesis of some nanomaterials or nanocomposites and how we uh, followed the uh, fabrication routes for the uh, fibers and the filters, media filters. And finally, the oil water separation performances of all the fibers and media filters that we did in our lab. First of all, the introduction, I'd like to say something about the uh, problem of oil spill by giving a short introduction on the story. So you know that global consumption of 30 billion barrels of petroleum a year with up to 5 million tons of oil shipped daily via sea routes. Approximately 196,000 tons of transportation cause severe oil leakage. This is a huge number. And of course, we are not so aware of it because it is happening in the marine environment and we are not aware of what is going on. So oil spill is just an accidental release of liquid petroleum hydrocarbons like crude oil from tankers and this will affect the marine organisms much because first of all when the oil spill happens the oil will be on the top of the water layer it will not allow the sunlight to go inside in into into the depth of the ocean so the plants aquatic plants or marine plants will not get the sunlight for their photosynthesis process and then uh, you, maybe you have heard about you have uh, you have read the news about some birds which can stand on the top of the they, they will fly and they will take rest on the on the surface of water and they will get wet by this oil so it will ultimately leads to their death and also this oil the seawater when it comes to the shore it will affect the physical and chemical nature of the soil so it will affect almost all um, sections of the organisms and also of course by the fish we are eating the fish and we don't know what is inside the fish and microplastics is another issue but these oil spill uh, we, we, we might think that the oil spill is happening somewhere uh, away far away from us but it will ultimately come to the human body and it will affect the ecosystem so what are the possible solutions of this problem and in our research we were trying to focus on finding out some remedies or some devices or something uh, which uh, can lead to the separation of this oil water mixtures. And also other than the oil spills, we might think that the oil spill is not related directly, it is not caused by us, it, we are not responsible. But we are responsible for the vegetable oils that is being, um, being sent to the water streams from our kitchen. We are using oils for plenty of applications and finally we will wash our hands or wash the vessels and it will uh, go to the drainage and finally it will go to the sea or the nearest water body which is near which is nearest to us 
So anyway, the humans are responsible for all these kinds of issues and it is our duty to find proper remedies. So other than oil spills, industrial disposal is a severe cause of oil contamination to water streams. And water mixed with chemicals and sand is pumped underground. And also there is a, there is a, um, a, pro, there is a, a report like US oil and gas companies produce 800 billion gallons of salty toxic wastewater each year. So this is very difficult task and people are working around the globe on membranes for desalination, water purification, and of course the oil water separation. We used, we adopted the strategy of using polymeric membranes for polymer based fibers or media filters for this effective oil water separation process. And when I, when I consider the pores or the channels uh, through which the oil or water can pass through the membrane, we can divide the membrane according to the pore size. This, this diagram shows how we can classify the membranes into different groups, starting from 0.1 nanometer, ending with one micrometer. This is the pore size. And while considering the oil water materials, uh, see, uh, here comes the reverse osmosis membranes, which we use for desalination purposes. There we need much less pore diameters. But for oil molecules, oil molecules are a little bit bigger than the uh, salt or uh, salt ions, ions, right? So we, we, we can concentrate on creating polymeric membranes with pore size ranging from 10 nanometer to 0.1 micrometer. So this is the ideal range we need for the, for the polymeric membranes to, to um, manipulate the polymeric membranes with pore size. So this is the range. It is a very important number. And he, we, can, we can target the hollow fiber membranes, polymer-based porous membranes, and we did a lot of studies on different kinds of materials, and we published a review paper based on this. So this is the link for the review paper, and this review paper will tell you what are the different strategies that we can adopt for effective separation of oil-water mixture. And how we can fabricate this fibrous polymer membranes? by electro spinning, melt spinning, wet spinning, phase inversion methods, and polymer blending, surface modification of membranes, blocker polymer membranes, Janus membranes, and many more. Because of the time limit, I'm not introducing all these, all the works that we did so far, but a group, a particular, some particular work will be the focus on today. But I would like to share you that we did electro spinning, we did the phase inversion method, we did the polymer blending, and we did the surface modification of membrane, and we did also the block copolymer membrane, membranes. So all these, other than melt spinning and wet spinning, we tried all the strategies for fabricating the polymer-based nanocomposite membranes for oil water separation. The objectives of today's presentation will be to develop polymer nanocomposite fibers for oil separation and to design compatible absorbers. So see, oil water separation can be done in two different ways. One is oil water separation itself, or the second one is absorption of oil from a, from a typical mixture of oil water emulsion. And also what is the mechanism involved in this oil absorption? And what are the parameters which depends upon the efficiency of a membrane? and also to effectively apply the present invention in technology. So first of all, I would like to introduce some uh, nanofibers that we made by electro spinning based on polystyrene and carbon nanotubes. And we, you know that polystyrene is a hydrophobic polymer and in the same way carbon nanotube is also very notable for its hydrophobicity. So we thought in the beginning, why don't we combine this hydrophobic polymer and, and uh, the hydrophobic nanofiller to make a hydrophobic, super hydrophobic nanocomposite fiber that can effectively separate oil and water. But this was the problem. Our material became super hydrophobic, so it could not separate oil water, oil water mixture. Rather, it absorbed the oil molecules. So this is the results. And we, we made polystyrene and carbon nanotube by electro spinning process, and this shows the fiber structure. And our material was antibacterial. We did some antibacterial study because during the membrane fabrication or during the, uh, during the application of the membranes in oil water separation, one of the biggest challenge that the scientists face is the biofouling. Because the material will be, the membrane will be in contact with the water 
And what will happen? Many times water is coming and cyclic process, recycling is happening. Uh, it, it's, it's just like a cyclic process of oil water separation. And finally, the bacteria present in water can um, foul the membranes. So another, another research problem while, or the research challenge while developing the membrane is we have to adopt suitable strategies to control this uh, anti-fouling or um, I mean fouling, fouling. And we have to uh, incorporate some antibacterial agents or we have to do something to reduce this fouling um, problem for the membranes. And this shows the contact angle values for the pure PS and PS CNT nanofibers with variable carbon nanotube concentration. So this was a typical, uh, I mean, this was a normal research with uh, varying the carbon nanotube loading from zero to one weight percentage. And also we tried gamma irradiation to make the nanocomposite stronger, to make the bonding between the carbon nanotube and the polystyrene stronger. And we identified that at 0.5 weight percentage of the carbon nanotube, it is showing very good performance. I mean, high contact angle. And also uh, the irradiation dose was applied for this material. And we identified the irradiation dose at 50 uh, kgy was the best for uh, ideal oil water, I mean, oil absorption. So this is uh, just a very, very preliminary uh, test, which we did in our lab, just take some colored um, uh, water with oil and also we can color the oil vice versa and we found that this oil can be the colored oil can be absorbed by this is the colored oil that's why the fiber looks like this the colored oil is absorbed by the fiber and here uh, this is simply the colorless oil and here also the fiber was able to absorb the oil so this is the typical water molecules standing on the membranes and this is the oil from this, this image, it is clear that the oil is staining the fiber. I mean, oil is being absorbed by the fiber, but water molecules are standing on the top of the fiber. So this means the fiber is super hydrophobic. And we also um, tested the oil sorption capacity with the different concentrations of carbon nanotubes and different irradiation doses. How we will find out the oil sorption capacity is we'll take a definite or specific amount of the fiber just dip in, in oil and we'll find out the weight change, how much change is there for the uh, after, after oil absorption. So this will give the gram per gram oil sorption capacity. And here also we got interesting results or high performance for the 0 0.5 weight percentages of carbon nanotube. And this is another uh, photo showing that how the water molecules are standing on the top of the membrane. And this is the oil water mixture before and after separation. I told you that we did some antibacterial studies and this is the result. And these are the PSCNT material and the polystyrene. PSCNT is like this. And uh, this is the treated membranes and this is the untreated polystyrene. And we could uh, see that the bacteria are not growing on the top of the polystyrene carbon nanotube. This was a very preliminary uh, data or preliminary result that we did. And continuous, in continuing with this, we also synthesized some polystyrene materials based on cobalt oxide and hexagonal boron nitride. Hexagonal boron nitride is just similar to uh, the graphene structure. And uh, we, we, we made a hybrid nanocomposite by combining hexagonal boron nitride and cobalt oxide we synthesized this hybrid material in our lab and we mixed with the polystyrene. Again, the same process was adopted, electrospinning. And here also, we, we got nice fibers, electrospun fibers, and we did the gamma radiation. And I'd say in the same line of polystyrene carbon nanotube result, uh, research. Sorry. After the gamma irradiation, the surface became rougher and the high cross-link density uh, was achieved the, by the gamma irradiation so that we could ensure good uh, filler polymer compatibility or filler polymer cross-linking density. And we found that the average uh, with the gamma irradiation, the fibers maintain similar diameter, confirming that there is no influence of irradiation on the fiber diameter. So the irradiation is not affecting the electrospinning or not affecting the fiber diameter, rather it is only affecting the cross-link density or the compatibility between the filler and the uh, polymer molecules. 
And in line with the previous research, this is the water molecules standing on the top of the fiber. Again, the fiber was super hydrophobic. And again, after gamma irradiation, we got good results. And this is the oil before separation and filtrate after separation, the UV visible absorption. So the question is, how you can ensure that your oil molecules are being absorbed or being filtered from your oil water emulsion. There are different methods of which one method is a UV visible. You take a UV. So if there is oil molecules, you will get some uh, peaks for the oil molecules. And if, if there are no oil, oil molecules after the filtration, you cannot see any, any peak. So this will be a, like a light. And this is the SEM image after the oil being absorbed. It also shows that there is no fiber. We cannot see the fiber because the fibers are immersed in oil. It is completely absorbed. Fibers are completely absorbing the oil. So now we also thought about synthesizing some fibers with internal pores. I mean, why don't we synthesize some electrospun fibers with pores on that? So this was the goal behind this particular research where we synthesized some silver doped zinc oxide materials and again the polystyrene and here we adopted. Uh, so this is the normal results showing um, the XPS, FTIR and uh, XRD graphs for the silver doped zinc oxide. This was just a very small synthesis process that we, done, we, we did in our lab, just synthesizing zinc oxide and just synthesizing zinc oxide in the presence of silver. Why we are using zinc oxide and silver doped zinc oxide in particular, you have to understand that the zinc oxide, has, zinc oxide is a semiconductor and has amazing property of photocatalysis. So here our aim was to make the membrane multifunctional. With zinc oxide, we can target the photocatalytic property and with silver, we can target the antibacterial performance. And now comes the highlight of the research, the porous fibers. This was also done by electrospinning, but not the normal electrospinning. It was a non-solvent induced phase separation assisted electrospinning. So for the normal electrospinning, we used it to take a, uh, uh, an organic solvent um, in which the polymer dissolves. So this is the general strategy we used it to adopt in electrospinning. But in the case of this particular electrospinning, we used to take two solvents. One is a non-solvent. So while electrospinning, this non-solvent will induce the phase separation inside the polymer. And due to this phase separation process, pores will be generated on the fiber itself. So you can see nice pores on the fiber. And I am happy to say that our, our, this research was highlighted in the Nature Middle East very recently. This is the link for the Nature Middle East article. And the title was Filtration Fibers for Cleaning Water. So here, this non-solvent induced phase separation assisted electrospinning. Now you can, you can imagine that pores are generated on the fiber itself. So this will enhance the performance of oil water separation, right? And this is the EDAX energy dispersive spectra, which we take for the silver doped zinc oxide sample and zinc oxide sample. And this nice um, image will show you or will confirm you that we have the silver and zinc uniformly distributed throughout the, throughout the sample. And this is the contact angle and the oil water separation results. Contact angle again shows PS silver dope zinc oxide is having high contact angle when compared to polystyrene and polystyrene zinc oxide. And we, um, we tested the oil water um, separation capacity of three different oils, engine oil, olive oil, and mineral oil. And we found different average oil absorption rates for all these oils. But in, in, this, case, or in, in, in this case, you can see that the best performance was obtained for the mineral oil. So this can be due to the density or the viscosity influence. And in the, this, this research was published in ACS Omega. So you can go and have a look on the article also. Here, we also compared the total organic component or total organic content of the oil water emulsion before and after the, the separation process. So this solution is before and the solution is after. You can clearly see that the solution, I mean, the water here is uh, clear when compared to this one. So the TOC value here will be high and here will be low. 
And this is the TOC value after subsequent cycles. This is the original cycle one, cycle two. So we have we are using the same membranes again and again to test the recyclability of the membrane. So we found that up to cycle five, the membrane was okay, perfectly fine. But after fifth cycle, we noticed that the TOC value is enhancing. So the membrane is losing its capacity probably after cycle five. And these are the different SEM images. This SEM images shows uh, the, the um, I mean, the cleaning capacity or cleaning capability. So after the oil water separation, what, what we have to do for the fiber? Each time we have to rinse the fiber in sodium hydroxide or any surfactant medium so that the oil will be uh, cleaned out of the fiber. So we tried uh, monitoring the fiber SEM uh, after the cleaning and before the cleaning and we found that it is perfectly working, it's working well. The membrane is, uh, is um, having its own, I mean, it is recovering its own uh, structure after the cleaning process. So this is okay. And this is the antibacterial studies. This is the bacterial growth on the fiber without silver doped zinc oxide. And this is with silver doped zinc oxide. So this means the silver is resisting the, the um, growth of bacteria. And this is the cell count for the control sample and the sample with uh, silver doped zinc oxide, which confirm the bacteria antibacterial property. So moving to the next uh, research, which was based on some blockopolymers. So our target was to study how blockopolymer will be uh, manipulated for effective oil water separation. So in this work, styrene, isoprene styrene is combined with misoporous silica, which is another good nanomaterial for oil water separation. And we adopted salt gel synthesis method for the production of this shaped misoporous, uh, misoporous nanoparticle, misoporous silica nanoparticle. And uh, we also followed the electro spinning strategy to synthesize SIS misoporous silica nanocomposite. And this shows the structure of misoporous silica and how we are doing the salt gel synthesis. And this is, uh, this is the shape, disc shape, and this is the FTAR and the XRD results confirming that we were able to synthesize the misoporous silica. And these are the different contact angle values for the SAS and SAS misoporous silica nanofibers. And the contact angle value, you can see that this ranges from 133 and 142. So this shows that this is hydrophobic again. And with the oil, it shows the oil. Um, this is the olive oil, and this is the engine oil. This is the coconut oil. How the oil, uh, what I mean, the contact angle value varies with oil molecules. So if it is hydrophobic, it is supposed to absorb the oil, right? So this is clear from this contact angle. All the contact angle values are shows acute angles. So this is oleophilic membranes again but not so much oleophilic when compared to the polystyrene. This is the highlight here. So here we could use this particular membrane in both ways. First one is we can use this membrane for absorbing the oil. And also the second strategy was we can use this, the same membrane for filtering the oil. And this is the, uh, this shows the coconut oil, olive oil and engine oil, how we did the oil absorption capacity by immersing the SIS misoporous silica composite in various oils and we found the we found the, the percentage of oil absorption for different oils here also the here here also the engine oil was showing the highest performance maybe due to the viscosity and density effects and the irregular distribution of misoporous nanoparticles loss of uh, leads to the loss of hydrophobicity maximum oil absorption ability showed by the engine oil. Yeah, this is another highlight of this research. I told you because of the mesoporous silica, we cannot completely, uh, I mean, completely expect the material is super hydrophobic. We can expect the hydrophobicity, but not that much when compared to the polystyrene or carbon nanotube composite. So in this case, what we did is we first tried the oil sorption capacity and also we had an industrial partner in this research, the Conoco Phillips, and they have a global water sustainability center and there they have a micro, uh, I mean, ultra filtration setup. So we handed over our samples to them 
and they performed this ultra filtration studies on our samples. So this was just like uh, separating the oil water emulsion, oil water mixture, what they have. They used it to have this oil water mixture from directly from the industry, like Qatar Petroleum or so. So this is the Amicon cell setup, and you can see that on the top of the magnetic stirrer, there is an Amicon cell. Here there is the membrane. They will load the membrane here, and water will be coming from, uh, from uh, a, a reservoir. There is a reservoir, and which will be connected to a pressure transducer. So this pressure transducer will give some pressure so that water from the feed reservoir, this is the feed reservoir, water will come from the feed reservoir through this pipe into the membrane and this will lead to some sort of separation or membrane filtration and the clean water can be collected from here, there is another tube here to this beaker. And this beaker is kept on the top of a uh, weighing balance so that we can have the correct accurate weight depending upon the uh, how 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 many grams of oil water we are keeping here depending upon that we can we can calculate what is the output so this is the ultra filtration setup in their lab conoco phillips so here they also notice that the toc removal percentage of the sis mesoporous silica composite coated on the PES substrate was much higher. So here we, we handed over, the, I told you that we handed over the membranes, but we did some kind of coating process for this membranes. There is a standard membrane, which is called polyether sulfone. And we did the electro spinning of styrene, isoprene, styrene, mesoporous silica composite on the top of this PES membrane. So we, we, we don't need to make the electrospun fiber so thick. It's just, like, uh, it's just like the surface modification of PES membranes. Electrospinning a few hours, I mean, a few minutes will be fine. Normally we used to do electrospin for long hours to get enough thickness for the obtained membranes. But in this case, we may need like 30 minutes or so for electrospinning. Then electrospin fibers will be deposited on the top of the PES. We adopted this strategy for some other uh, kind of composites also. And in all cases, the results were so fine. And here we find that our material can effectively separate the oil water emulsion. Here also we tried the SIS mesoporous silica as media filters. So in the beginning, when we did the electro spinning, the fibers were just stuck on the aluminum foil. So we thought, why, why don't we roll this aluminum foil into small cylinders and just pack the cylinders in, in a conical flask like this. And we were successful. So we added some oil water mixture like this. And we, uh, we, it was quite amazing to notice that all the oil molecules were absorbed by this cylinders. So uh, we, we also proposed the possibility of using the same composite as media filters. I'd like to share one last uh, piece of work, which is some hydrophobic sponge. So this is um, this this was the strategy adopted for preparing this kind of nanocomposite. This is unpublished data, so I am not going to uh, tell much about this. So this is the sugar template method. Uh, so we normally do the sugar template method for dipping the sugar in some polymeric medium, then dry the sugar and then keep the sugar in, in water. What will happen? The sugar will be dissolved in water, leaving the polymer in, in, in the form of some sponge. So we adopted this strategy because the forms may have different kinds of uh, pores inside and we adopted this strategy and we found that the water molecules are standing on the top of the sponge. Normally, the surface is rough. So anyway, the water molecules has to be absorbed by the rough surface. But in this case, it is so super hydrophobic that the water molecule is standing on the top of the, uh, top of the uh, sponge. And these are the two contact angle um, uh, results. One, one shows that the water molecule is standing. This is the water contact angle. And this is the oil contact angle. There is no oil molecules, means oil is being absorbed by the material. And this shows the typical structure of the porous sponge. You can see that the pores are huge. So the pores can allow effective holding or effective absorption of the oil 
leaving the water. And these are the oil removal efficiency uh, of neat PVDF, neat PS, and we also added some kind of nanoparticles here. I'm not going to the details as it is not published. This particular composite showed percentage of weight increase like 993 percentage. So this was a huge. Yeah, I'd like to show this video. This, this was done for a short work for, the, uh, for some high school students when they came to our lab. This was a very short uh, result. And they were trying to uh, pour some um, oil, oil and water uh, like this. So uh, when, they, when they poured the oil, it was absorbed by this uh, sponge and the water was coming down. Yes, conclusion. Gravity-driven oil water separation was clear in the case of polystyrene and carbon nanotube at 0.5 weight percentage of carbon nanotube. Contact angle value of the gamma irradiated composite was higher. This is because of the high compatibility of the filler and the polymer molecules inside the composite after gamma irradiation. And uniformly distributed silver zinc oxide. We have another paper based on the porous electrosmon uh, polystyrene with silver zinc oxide highlighting the photocatalytic application of zinc oxide. So it is uh, by this way we can, we can make multifunctional composites. And for SIS mesoporous composite, uh, it was useful for ultrafiltration experiments. So these are the different strategies that we adopted in our research for separating oil water emulsions. And summary is we need a better life. Of course, we need water, we need um, to live. And uh, finally, I would like to acknowledge Qatar National Research Fund, which is the largest funding body in Qatar uh, by NPRP program. This is the NPRP number and the team uh, ICAMS, especially Dr. Sanjay Latte for inviting me uh, to share some of my research area to the audience. And the collaborations are always welcome. We cannot stand by ourselves. So we need, uh, maybe you, you might have more expertise than me and you might propose some new areas that I don't know. So collaboration is always, I'm, I'm always open. And uh, my email ID, I'll share in the chat. So if you have some questions or if you have some concerns, especially the students, internship programs or something, some kind of collaborations, we are always happy. Yeah. Thank you for um, your Yeah, thanks uh, so much, uh, Dr. Deepu Lakshmi Pono, ma'am, uh, for giving a very interesting and uh, informative uh, uh, invited talk. Uh, uh, before, um, I say it's a few, I ask few questions. I will ask the questions which will be, which are raised by the participants. Uh, I'm just rolling down the chat box. So Dr. Aslam Tambol is asking, what type of uh, hydrophilic polymer can affect oil water separation? Yeah, this is one of the biggest thing that we have to we have to keep in our mind. When, the, when a polymer is hydrophilic, like polyvinyl alcohol or polylactic acid, we cannot, we cannot use for it for oil water separation because oil water separation is something uh, like we don't, we don't want the material to dissolve in the water. So it will, it will create another, another problem. So we don't want such kind, of, such kind of materials in oil water separation. I see. Um, next question is asked by the Dr. Mahindra Kaule. Uh, from Sangameshwar College, Solapur. So he says, uh, hello ma'am, what was the volume of uh, water droplet used for the contact angle studies? Yeah, it was in micro, it was in micro liter range. We used uh, a micro pipette, so it was in micro uh, liter range. Uh, yeah, it is in micro uh, volumes, like micro liter, but uh, exact uh, uh, volume of uh, that. I guess, I guess it is uh, 20, 20. 20 micro liter. Yeah, yeah. I see, I see. Uh, 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 now coming to my questions, uh, 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 before that, uh, I'm sorry, I, sh I should have to summarize it and uh, uh, Dr. Uh, uh, Purnama has given uh, an invited talk on fibers and media filters for effective separation of oil water mixtures. And uh, it is worldwide problem of the water, uh, water pollution and uh, it is mainly because of the oils and many the environmental things are affected because of the oil, uh, uh, 
oil spill is in the water. So uh, one question uh, uh, when I was reading the uh, many of the research papers that they separate the chloroform and hexane uh, mixed in the water. Yes, we did, we did that also. We did that also. Yeah, but, but sometimes uh, what I think that some of the polymers are uh, dissolved in chloroform and hexane. And if you suppose if you are preparing the polystyrene nanofibers and um, separating the chloroform from it, so can it dissolve the uh, uh, poly poly polystyrene nanofibers? Definitely, definitely yes. So we have mm -hmm. to we have to select which is the organic solvent we have to separate based on mm -hmm. the polymer properties. I see. I see. So if a po particular polymer is dissolvable in DMF, we mm -hmm. cannot use DMF for separation purpose. Correct. So we have to we have to change to like hexane or um, mm -hmm. benzene or something. Correct. So we, we, this one we have to decide according to the polymer properties. Yes, yes. Uh, from uh, in which. Uh, um, Solvent, we have dissolved the polymers like that. Exactly, exactly. Uh, other, than, the... other than that solvent. Yeah. yeah. Mm -hmm. um, the next question, you, you have studied the emulsion separation. So which one is the difficult separation, uh, whether oil in water emulsion or water in oil emulsion is difficult to separate? I think it is difficult to separate water in oil emulsion. I because see. oil in, in oil in water emulsion, the oil, oil uh, concentration will be very small. Correct. So uh, anyone can, I mean, not anyone, but uh, normally a research, uh, it is easy to separate oil in water emulsion because mm -hmm. the oil molecules are very small. Uh -huh. But when the oil, um, like water in oil emulsion means oil is huge. Mm -hmm. So in this case, we have to be very careful because we have to remove all the oil and we have to save a little, little water. Correct. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Um, uh, yeah, I, I, I noted down the, um, is it affect the thickness of the membrane, but uh, by the time you have given the answer in the uh, invited talk, so I will not. So, uh, whether the, how to achieve the porosity in the nanofibers, uh, is it depends on the polymers used in the, uh, to prepare the uh, nanofibers? If you want the... It, it depends upon the polymers and it depends upon the solvents also. It depends upon the solvents also. Solvents. In our case, we used polystyrene and uh, DMSO, DMSO and chlorobenzene were mm -hmm. the solvents. Mm -hmm. So because of the DMSO and chlorobenzene, one is a solvent and one is a non-solvent. Mm -hmm. This non-solvent will induce the phase separation. So whichever is your polymer, you have to select two solvents mm -hmm. and uh, sp uh, there is a specific ratio also. There is a uh, like a phase diagram by which we can, uh, uh, I mean, we can determine the exact ratio between the non-solvent and the solvent. And this yes. non-solvent will be um, creating the porous. I ratio. see, I see. I, I didn't know that. Uh, so thanks, thanks for the, uh, this information. I will try it. Um, uh, I like this sugar template um, which you have used for the preparation of the uh, polymers and uh, yeah this is the nice idea and um, yeah this is uh, as I said it was very informative um, uh, lecture and uh, uh, all the participants have uh, enjoyed uh, it and I hope uh, I ask also the participants to have the collaboration have the internship uh, uh, with uh, Dr. Ponama and you can contact she has shared her email ID in the chat box so please uh, have the contacts and keep the contacts. So once again, uh, Dr. Deepalak Sipunama, thanks uh, once again for accepting our uh, invitation and delivering an excellent talk. Thank you. Thank you so much. Thank you so much, Dr. Thank you. So we have the uh, next invited talk uh, of Dr. Uh, Sarvanan Nagapan from the uh, uh, So, uh, uh, welcome, uh, Dr. Saronan Nagapan. Uh, how are you? Uh, nice to nice to meet you. <laughs> nice to see you. So <laughs> it was long time to see see you, and uh, we have didn't talk uh, like this. Uh, we we had the telephone uh, conversation. Mm -hmm. yeah, nice to mm -hmm. see you. Um, uh, so uh, you you can share your PPT right now, and uh, I will just yeah, sure. introduce you uh, to the participants. Uh, yeah, yeah. So, Dr. Saronan Nagapan, uh, so he has uh, completed his bachelor degree in chemistry in 2006, 
from Madras University, India. Uh, also, he com completed his master degree in chemistry in 2008 from uh, Thiruvalluvar University, India. He also completed his EM Tech in polymer science and engineering in 2010 from Anna University, India, and PhD in polymer science and engineering in 2015 under the supervision of Professor Chang Sik Ha from Busan National University, Korea. So Professor Chang Sik Ha, who has given the excellent talk in the uh, uh, keynote talk. So uh, Dr. Saronan is a student of him. Uh, and and uh, I, I should uh, acknowledge that Dr. Saronan Nagapan has given the contact of the Professor Chang Sik Ha for the keynote talk. So uh, thanks, uh, Dr. Saronan, for this kind help. Um, so he also worked as a postdoc fellow under Professor Chang Sikha from March 2015 to August 2020. Uh, since September two, uh, 2020, he continuing his postdoc fellowship under Professor Kang Hyun Park in the Department of Chemistry uh, in the same university, Pusan National University. His researches include the synthesis and fabrication of various organic inorganic hybrid nanomaterials, MXIN, graphene, carbon and nanoclay based materials for coating catalysis, environmental remediation, biomedical electrocatalysis and energy storage and con conversion application. Currently he is focusing on the synthesis of functional nano, nano hybrid materials for electrocatalysis, especially for oxygen reduction reaction, oxygen evolution reaction and hydrogen evolution reaction and their assembly in fuel cell and battery application. He has published more than 50 research articles with one book and four book chapters. He has uh, national and international patents. Also, he received many uh, awards for his uh, oral presentation and poster presentation. Uh, and I saw his uh, Google Scholar uh, index is more than, uh, is hitting more than 3000 uh, citation in Google Scholar. So, uh, with this brief uh, introduction, uh, I ask my friend, my colleague, and my collaborator, Dr. Sir, uh, to continue the invited talk. Doctor. Yeah, nice. yeah, thank you very much, Dr. Sanjay. So, I will talk about uh, today's topic anti fogging and antibacterial uh, amphiphilic coating from organic and organic nano hybrids. So, before uh, going to talk about this topic, I just introduce uh, some basic concepts about uh, uh, where uh, South Korea is there. So everybody knows, but uh, I will show just uh, my uh, current place uh, in Busan. So this uh, Korea's uh, southeast part, uh, so Busan is here. It's uh, surrounded uh, beautiful sea seashores and uh, very good uh, for uh, tourist place. So just I'm uh, enjoying in this place uh, for a long time. So it's very good. If you have any chances, you can visit here and we can make some collaborative works also. Uh, so let's talk about uh, today's topic. So I, I told about uh, antibacterial and anti-fogging coatings. This uh, is like a smart coating because uh, we can apply these coatings in various applications and also uh, can be useful in large industrial applications uh, because uh, anti-fogging can uh, resist water, water uh, for, uh, fogging uh, so it can be uh, much useful to uh, reduce uh, so many accidents or uh, uh, other uh, you know, applications and also antibacterial is also is uh, currently much important because uh, due to current pandemic uh, like uh, anti uh, microbial coatings are much useful because uh, in masks when we apply these coatings is uh, highly good for our uh, uh, health so that we can use this type of coatings in wide applications. So coming to the anti-fogging applications, uh, anti-fogging is if we can make uh, two types of uh, coating materials like uh, hydrophobic and hydrophilic. So both can show some anti-fogging, but hydrophobic is not so good uh, for uh, anti-fogging because uh, water drops are uh, deposited on the hydrophobic. Uh, it cannot easily uh, comes out from hydrophobic, whereas uh, hydrophilic uh, is good, so it can uh, penetrate uh, the water droplets on this uh, uh, surface, so that uh, hydrophilic uh, is much good. So coming apart from hydrophilic, uh, super hydrophilic is much better because uh, this uh, highly uh, disperse 
and uh, uh, penetrate uh, full water, uh, all, all water droplets on the surface so that uh, the substrate is completely wettable. So this uh, super hydrophilic and uh, highly hydrophilic coatings are much useful for anti-fogging. Similarly, uh, for antibacterial coatings also, uh, hydrophilic uh, is much good. Some antibacterial agents uh, with hydrophilic properties are so very good uh, resistance to uh, bacteria as well as uh, killing uh, bacteria on the surface. And also, apart from hydrophilic, uh, super hydrophobic also shows uh, very good antibacterial properties because it uh, enhances uh, it withstand the uh, resist the uh, bacteria deposited on the uh, surface and also it's prevent the bacterial growth on the hydro super hydrophobic surface. So based on this concept, uh, we did some applications and uh, currently we are focusing uh, some anti-fogging and anti, uh, anti-fogging as well as antibacterial because this uh, is very good for industrial applications. So as I told, anti-fogging uh, is uh, we can uh, inspire from nature like this fly eyes which contains uh, anti antibacterial anti-fogging uh, surface phenomena because uh, this water drops easily penetrates on this uh, surface and uh, it can show uh, more clear. So based on this concept, uh, several research works currently carrying out to develop anti-fogging anti coatings. So uh, like, uh, uh, like our high glasses and as well as uh, packaging uh, films uh, with anti-fogging is much good to product uh, food materials as well as uh, real uh, mirrors, uh, vehicle side mirrors uh, is uh, containing some anti-fogging. It can clearly show the images uh, comes out on the backside. So this type of coating as well as uh, we can use the helmet or other uh, electronic or as well as uh, uh, automobiles. So this anti-fogging coatings is uh, widely used uh, like this application and also some other applications. So based on the need. And uh, for antibacterial coatings uh, also uh, currently uh, used in large uh, industrial applications because uh, bacteria, uh, due to some uh, pandemic situations, uh, we have to always uh, keep our health uh, more safer. And uh, for that reason, we are always using some sanitizers or masks or uh, some uh, detergent to keep our health more safer. And uh, in Korea, uh, some uh, now uh, antibacterial film also developed. So they used uh, some copper uh, copper source with polymers and to develop some antibacterial film. This can applied in uh, escalators or uh, lift. Uh, this can show some good protection against uh, bacterial de uh, development on the uh, daily use products. Also in medical applications, medical devices also antibacterial coatings are good to protect uh, bacterial growth on these uh, surgical knives or other uh, medical devices. So based on this uh, uh, two concept, we develop uh, antibacterial as well as anti-fogging uh, coating materials and uh, we uh, make some good transparency and, and uh, highly stable properties. But uh, our main goal is to make uh, non-toxic solvent, uh, to make uh, hydrophobic and uh, hydro anti-fogging as well as antibacterial coating with uh, non-toxic uh, solvents because that is the main uh, to develop uh, for uh, to develop as well as for commercializing uh, large quantities uh, as well as for uh, industrial applications so that uh, it will be more eco-friendly. Uh, in that case, we have to mainly think about non-fluorinated organic compounds because uh, uh, fluorinated also have some toxic nature and also it's expensive. So to avoid this, uh, we are focusing uh, non-fluorinated, uh, eco-friendly, and non-toxic materials. The uh, main uh, our goal is to make a uh, highly transparent and uh, highly stable means uh, robust coating and uh, anti antibacterial and anti-fogging is uh, uh, final application. So before application, our main goal is to make these uh, uh, criteria so that this can be much useful for commercial applications. So uh, surface properties, uh, we mainly discussed about the water contact angles on the uh, coated substrate. So mainly it's, uh, if the uh, coated substrate are completely wettable or uh, partially uh, uh, shows some water, uh, water drops, it shows uh, some hydrophilic nature. Uh, 
based on theory of contact angles we called uh, if the contact angle uh, below 90 we call it as hydrophilic and above 90 uh, we called as uh, hydrophobic substrate and uh, from uh, 120 to 150 we will say it's uh, uh, highly hydrophobic but uh, above 150 uh, we can say it's uh, super hydrophobic so when the uh, surface energy is very low it can show uh, super hydrophobic uh, uh, vice versa uh, if high surface energy uh, it shows some uh, hydrophilic behavior so we we reviewed uh, based on the magnetic, uh, magnetic uh, materials uh, for uh, making that uh, super hydrophobic materials as well as their uh, various applications you can check these uh, uh, applications uh, based on this uh, manuscript. So, if in this, we uh, given uh, much details about how uh, magnetic based superhydrophobic coatings can be used for variety of applications because magnetic based materials can be easily recycled so that this can be much useful in several applications. And uh, we also developed some superhydrophobic uh, sponge uh, using some natural. Uh, uh, material using we used uh, uh, like uh, lotus leaf powder and uh, using some uh, silica precursor and uh, silicon precursors we develop some highly stable and uh, highly uh, water resistant super hydrophobic coatings uh, on this uh, sponge this cover letter shows clearly how this can be applied for oil waters uh, absorption so this uh, sponge can easily absorb large amount of oil uh, from the oil water spills so that this can be used in variety of applications. And also we, uh, we checked the uh, our developed uh, superhydrophobic sponge is very good. Uh, and also uh, we also make uh, some superhydrophobic substrate on glass substrate uh, that coated materials uh, completely non-wettable because uh, uh, it's uh, contact angle is almost uh, over 175 uh, to 180, near, almost uh, near to 180, we call it maximum. So this superhydrophobic is highly uh, very stable on the substrate and also we checked the thermal properties of the coated substrate um, with uh, different temperatures. So when we check the coated substrate up to 500 uh, degrees centigrade, the superhydrophobicity is maintained. Means uh, this uh, highly stable against uh, temperature and also we also checked this uh, uh, after 600. So from five to 500 to 600, the super hydrophobic properties uh, completely change uh, to super hydrophilic. So at 600, and uh, from here we uh, found that from 550 to 600, this uh, changes uh, drastically occur. And uh, around 500 uh, of uh, 88 hours, uh, above eight hours, uh, the super hydrophobic change to super hydrophilic. So this uh, study more details you can check from this paper. And uh, also we used this uh, superhydrophobic substrate uh, for uh, oil, water, uh, oil water absorption. And also we used the organic solvent absorption. So this uh, shows a very good uh, reusability uh, for several cycles and also we maintain the stability on the SLS uh, superhydrophobicity. Further, we are uh, interested to develop uh, some highly hydrophilic, highly hydrophobic uh, coatings using uh, some uh, PVC and mercaptol-based uh, uh, poly uh, uh, metallopolymers. We used uh, uh, here nickel. Uh, we used uh, iron source as a precursor to make some cross-linking with these mercaptol precursors, and we developed these uh, coating materials with the uh, highly transparent and uh, also very stable uh, these uh, coating materials so which shows uh, it's uh, very good hydrophobicity as well as transparency and also uh, the stability is very good it's uh, uh, hardness is almost uh, uh, it's 7 to 8 h so means uh, this uh, coating on the glass substrate is uh, completely stable so this work we applied is we uh, got patent for international patent so this work is very good for making highly hydrophobic as well as uh, highly stable uh, anti-stain coating applications. Based on this idea, we developed uh, recently. We published this work uh, by a similar concept. We used this mercapto uh, precursor with some acrylate monomer and forming some click reaction uh, by using thiol in click reaction. 
uh, using some uh, photo initiator and then we uh, use uh, in this case uh, we use zinc and aluminum we also tried with uh, several other metal uh, precursors but uh, we optimized only zinc and aluminum is much good in this uh, synthesis case so we developed some uh, metal ion uh, metal ion loaded uh, precursors and then recording this uh, solution uh, on glass substrate so it shows uh, this coated substrate shows uh, very good hydrophobic properties and uh, and further, we modify this hydrophobic uh, to highly hydrophilic because, uh, as I introduced uh, the topic, uh, hydrophobic and anti fogging and as well as antibacterial applications. So, we in this case, we plan to make uh, two, two types of uh, substrate like uh, hydrophobic substrate as well as hydrophilic substrate. So, that first we considered to make uh, some hydrophobic substrate and then modifying this hydrophobic substrate to hydrophilic, uh, highly hydrophilic using some. Uh, hydrophilic materials is like a poly uh, capital trial as well as uh, silicon nanoparticles we uh, forming some uh, suspensions and then uh, coating on this uh, uh, coating this suspension on the hydrophobic uh, coated substrate so that uh, layer by layer technique we used to adapt uh, this uh, highly hydrophobic as well as hydrophilic coated substrate so that we can uh, use this uh, uh, prepared substrates for anti fogging as well as antibacterial applications so <clears throat> so this uh, the manuscript uh, did more details we can find uh, from this and uh, we developed that uh, coating materials uh, using uh, two types of uh, organic solvent like uh, ethyl acetate and uh, acetone and ethyl acetate as a combination of uh, two solvent so that we compare uh, this uh, uh, coated substrate with a different solvent and as well as using uh, we optimize we kept uh, stable of uh, other precursors uh, we just uh, change the uh, solvent mixers and uh, we prepare this uh, solution with different uh, metal source and uh, so without uh, without uh, loading uh, metal on the uh, click reaction uh, solution it shows highly transparent so and also this uh, prepared uh, coating solution is uh, very stable this can show some hydrophobic uh, this uh, after uh, loading with uh, some metal so the metal uh, ligand uh, coordination is happened so that uh, the reaction is uh, highly faster actually in this case we can use uh, copper gold and other uh, transition metals also uh, but uh, because gold is highly reactive with this uh, uh, with this material so these materials, uh, this makeup of makeup of functional groups uh, are highly reactive with uh, gold, mercury, and other uh, like silver, other uh, metals. But uh, due to cost, uh, we uh, due to making some low cost effect, uh, low cost materials, we just focusing uh, zinc, aluminium, and other metals. So first uh, we tried with uh, iron, as like we uh, you developed previous. So in this case, iron uh, we encountered some problems. And also we use copper it's also uh, the transparency is not so good and uh, when we use uh, uh, aluminum and zinc uh, transparency not so good but uh, uh, dispersibility is good and then we can make this uh, stable solution but uh, we should uh, be uh, caution against uh, the moisture because uh, this materials uh, is quite uh, sensitive to moisture so that we maintain this uh, under uh, argon atmosphere or nitrogen atmosphere uh, when it required we can just take out the solution and uh, immediately coating and also uh, we have to care more about more uh, caution because it sometimes makes gelation after exposing a longer time of uh, in air so that uh, we should more care about uh, and developing these materials and uh, so we checked the functionality of this uh, synthesized material uh, First, uh, this uh, thiolene click reaction uh, modified materials in the presence of uh, both solvents shows uh, uh, the Mercapto function group is still remain. Means uh, uh, without, before adding metal ions, this uh, Mercapto function groups is still remain just because we used the uh, one is to one ratio. So uh, metal uh, this Mercapto is remain because for further reactions. So uh, we confirm that with this one and after uh, loading with the metal also this uh, Pig is still remain because uh, these make uh, some not complete reaction. <clears throat> so, uh, 
so this uh, like uh, make up to some bond, uh, full bonding or some partial bonding as well as uh, during some thermal treatment this also makes some ss bond uh, so sulfur sulfur uh, bonds so this can uh, confirm further um, and also we check the silicon nmr of this uh, synthesized uh, materials it shows uh, uh, it's uh, uh, this hydrophobic this uh, uh, alkoxic function group is still maintained uh, on this uh, coated substrate after uh, uh, reacting with uh, some methylate uh, silicon precursors and further we checked the uh, uh, chemical compositions as, uh, by uh, xps uh, so it shows that uh, we can for confirming zinc present in the coated substrate as well as aluminum we check this uh, x, uh, x ray photoelectron spectroscopy so it shows uh, we can confirm uh, the presence of other ele uh, elements like uh, carbon oxygen uh, sulfur or silica uh, present in the coated materials um, so we confirming this on the further we checking the morphology of the coated substrate on glass substrate uh, so it shows uh, before adding uh, some metal it shows some smooth morphology whereas uh, after loading with some metal source like uh, iron and uh, iron and no not zinc and aluminum it shows some uh, particulate structure uh, while we load with uh, second layer uh, with uh, polycarbonate uh, triol and silica is becoming some rough surface morphology so we just compare with uh, different solvents so it shows uh, based on solvents is uh, the surface property little changed and we are also confirming the um, element, uh, confirming the presence of metal source and other elements by rex uh, rex mapping which will clearly uh, prove the presence of each elements in the uh, coated materials so like uh, aluminum and zinc uh, it's uh, confirming the presence of uh, uh, coated uh, uh, presence of metals on the coated substrate and uh, we also uh, uh, concluding the amount of uh, zinc and uh, aluminum uh, present on the uh, coated substrate for based on the atomic weight atomic percentage of these uh, metals on the coated substrate shows that uh, material uh, because we used a very small quantity of uh, uh, metal source so that uh, the metal composition is not so high anyway in this composition shows some good properties so we just optimize these uh, concentrations uh, for further applications so we also checking the surface morphology further by atomic force microscopy uh, to confirm the rough, uh, smooth or rough morphology which was uh, before uh, loading with metal and uh, after loading metal the uh, smooth surface morphology becoming uh, quite rough and uh, after uh, loading with the silica it's, uh, the surface morphology is becoming more rough so this uh, for uh, uh, ethyl state solvent this for a stone and ethyl state combination uh, both source some difference and uh, so we optimize uh, this and uh, we further giving that uh, roughness is uh, quite uh, normal for making some morphology and also we check the hardness of the coated substrate using uh, pencil hardness test so it shows that uh, our coating material without loading metal is uh, good hydrophobic as well as uh, shows uh, the conducting uh, this uh, hardness is around 4H. It's quite uh, good for some applications because 4H also is enough to use uh, different applications. But uh, uh, while uh, modifying this uh, uh, this uh, thiolene click reaction solution with uh, metal source zinc and aluminum, the hardness is highly improved. And after uh, second layer coating with the silica also, the, uh, the uh, uh, hardness is very maintained and also shows very good uh, hard, hard, uh, robust surface property on the coated substrate. And we checked the contact angle of the uh, metal loaded uh, substrate shows uh, it's around 100 uh, contact angles and uh, uh, with it's uh, uh, after the second layer of silica coating it shows that almost uh, uh, nearly uh, complete uh, vegetable substrate so it's uh, hydrophilic uh, to super hydrophilic uh, behavior uh, so we also checked the uh, oil conduct angle using hexadecane as a oil source so it shows that it's completely vegetable uh, to hexadecane and also it can show some other uh, vegetable to some other organic uh, uh, oils also so it means uh, it shows some amphiphilic property after uh, making these uh, final coatings so we also checked the without uh, in the absence of silica 
we checked that uh, only we used uh, polycapillary triol uh, to make this coating, which also shows uh, it's good hydrophilic hydroph properties and also uh, oleophilic property of, uh, because it's suitable to oil. So this uh, uh, amphiphilic is much good. And uh, further, we tried the transparency of our coated substrate, which shows uh, without uh, without loading with metal, without uh, reacting with metal, uh, shows uh, very good transparency because uh, the solution is highly transparent, very stable. So the co coated substrate also shows very good transparency. Whereas uh, after uh, re reacting with metal, the transparency because the so uh, solution is, uh, so looks like uh, opaque. Uh, so it's reduced partially the transparency, but it's quite uh, okay to use these coatings for applications. So uh, we also checked the uh, silica loaded uh, substrate. It shows uh, compared with this, the transparency is quite reduced because the uh, uh, presence of some silica particle is like uh, opaque. So uh, while loading with this one, it's uh, also make uh, some reduction in the transparency so that uh, the hydrophobic uh, uh, this hydrophilic substrate it shows quite uh, less transparency, but it's uh, okay. It's uh, to apply this. So here uh, the optical image shows that these uh, our coating materials is very good uh, transparent. We also compared this uh, coated substrate with a different layer of uh, this hydrophilic uh, coating on the hydrophobic substrate. So we tried almost a five layer of hydrophilic uh, coating on this uh, substrate. It shows uh, while increasing the layer by layer uh, thickness on the substrate, the transparency uh, is reduced. So we just uh, kept uh, one layer coating for uh, our, uh, further application because uh, one layer coating is enough to make highly transparent. And uh, without uh, silica also it shows here, uh, without silica uh, also shows similar. Uh, so it's around 80. Was uh, 80 percentage of uh, transparency, 80 to 85 percentage of transparency, and uh, we further checking the uh, amount of uh, silica uh, in that uh, hydrophilic substrate, so that we increasing the hydrophilic silica content, uh, silica content on this uh, coating material. So while in increasing the silica content in the coating materials, which uh, shows uh, some uh, rough morphology on the uh, substrate because uh, more silica. Uh, forming more uh, more structures on the substrate, and also this reduce the transparency because of a large quantity of silica particles deposit. So we just uh, kept optimized on the uh, one uh, 0.18 percentage of silica in our coatings, and uh, this uh, we just uh, check for comparison study, and also this uh, we're increasing uh, silica amount uh, hydrophilicity partially increased because uh, uh, maybe this interaction with the silica particle and the previous uh, polycarbonate trial is uh, have some uh, changes uh, in the uh, trans hydrophobic natures so that uh, while increasing silica particles amount the contact angle little changes as compared with uh, lower quantity of silica and also transparency is uh, reduced while increasing the uh, silica content and further we checked the anti-fogging uh, properties on the coated substrate uh, this uh, it's uh, like uh, this hydrophobic coating and this uh, hydro, super hydrophilic coating. So uh, we just checked the anti fogging test using uh, some hot water bath. So we kept our coated substrate on the hot water bath. The water bath temperature is around 900 degree, uh, around 90 degree, 90 degree of uh, water bath. Uh, so when the water uh, evaporates, the uh, fog generated on, uh, from the water uh, will be deposited on the substrate. So this hydrophobic uh, coated substrate, uh, more folks are uh, deposited, which means uh, uh, hydrophobic, as I told, uh, it can have uh, more radiation with water, so that uh, the transparency also reduced, whereas uh, compared with the hydrophobic, the super hydrophilic uh, substrate uh, shows completely uh, transparent because uh, hydrophilic substrates can uh, absorb uh, sub uh, water drops, water folks and also penetrate on the surface uh, interlayers so that uh, it can maintain the uh, good transparency. And further, we also check these uh, properties after keeping uh, one minute uh, uh, under stationary mode. And uh, after one minute, we check again uh, the transparency 
of the quota substrates, which shows uh, anti-fogging uh, test can be so much better in superhydrophilic coatings as compared with hydrophobic coating. Further, we check the antibacterial properties of these uh, uh, coated materials. It shows that uh, we used two types of bacteria, E. coli and uh, Pseudomonas uh, So these two bacteria uh, can show some good properties against uh, bacteria. Against uh, these uh, coated materials shows uh, very good uh, antibacterial behavior uh, as compared with uh, without the metal. So we used uh, zinc and aluminum. So we share uh, zinc shows for uh, E. coli and uh, Pseudomonas uh, bacteria shows uh, compared with uh, uh, this Pseudomonas uh, E. coli bacteria is quite uh, good for these coated materials. And also further we compared with this uh, Pseudomonas uh, bacteria with uh, aluminum source so that uh, we got uh, compared with uh, uh, zinc aluminum shows uh, much better for Pseudomonas uh, bacteria. So it shows uh, based on bacteria, based on surface coating and based on metal source, the antibacterial properties can differ. And uh, we further checked the coated substrate uh, stability uh, against uh, acidic and basic as well as neutral medium by keeping this uh, coated substrate in different medium, uh, different pH solutions uh, for 24 hours. And then we checked the uh, metal ion leaching from the coated substrate. It shows because of uh, uh, dissolution behavior of uh, aluminum uh, at our basic medium as well as uh, uh, zinc at acidic medium. This can uh, leach out some of uh, metal source uh, and the aluminum uh, at basic medium almost it comes out. So uh, it's not so good at the higher acidic or higher basic medium, whereas at a neutral pH, uh, our coated materials uh, is very stable. And we further checking uh, the coated substrate against cold uh, cold water, hot water, and room temperature water. Uh, so it shows that this uh, superhydrophilic uh, surface uh, uh, is uh, highly stable uh, for all temperature of water, so that we can use uh, this uh, coated substrate in any uh, any climate uh, climate uh, climates. So this uh, this type of uh, highly stable coatings are much useful for various applications. So that we are currently looking for some industrial. Uh, development and also for large scale. So maybe in future we can uh, enlarge this uh, coating solution for uh, commercial applications. In conclusion, uh, we developed some highly stable and uh, highly transparent uh, and uh, robust surface coating uh, with uh, antibacterial as well as antibacterial anti anti properties using organic and organic hybrid materials and uh, we conclude that this material is uh, very good transparency and also hardness is very very uh, good and uh, trans uh, and uh, the other properties also very good and also for application this uh, is quite uh, good and we compare these coatings with some other applications also uh, so in future we can use this one for other applications also so now i like to thank uh, miss yubin jian she is master student in our lab so she almost carried out this experiment based on my knowledge and uh, also i like to thank professor cheng sika for giving uh, opportunity to this uh, to do this experiment in his lab so that we happily worked for longer times to develop various types of coating solutions as well as coating substrates for the various applications and also we like to thank uh, our project uh, supporters uh, like uh, in our, uh, so uh, Brian, uh, Brian, Pool, uh, uh, Brian Korea uh, 21 for, for programs and other uh, pro research programs uh, to, to give uh, financial support for their uh, uh, help to make these coding materials successful. So and also I'd like to thank uh, uh, these uh, conference uh, committees members as well as other uh, uh, participants to uh, participate in my presentation. I, I hope you may get some idea. If you have any doubts, you can con uh, call me uh, from my uh, email ID, which will be shared shortly. Thank you very much. Yeah. Um, thank you so much, uh, Dr. Saranan Nagapan. This is one, one another uh, excellent lecture given by the uh, last invited talk of this uh, uh, session, uh, Dr. Saranan Nagapan. So he has given the uh, insight about the anti-fogging and antibacterial amphiphilic coating from organic inorganic hybrids.
so uh, uh, yes, anti-fogging coatings and antibacterial coatings uh, will be having the high demand in coming future. And of course, uh, currently they are uh, also having the high demands, but uh, maybe the durability is an issue. Uh, yeah, yeah. Sarvanan can uh, put more uh, light on this. Uh, how, how to increase the uh, durability of the, uh, such a coatings? So we should care about uh, the solvent medium. So based on the solvent, uh, we can make some highly stable uh, as well as uh, durable substrate. Also based on our uh, selection of polymers or organic precursors, the durability is different. So first we should care uh, uh, the main goal. Uh, if we need a highly stable means we have to think the material should be uh, well dispersed as well as uh, uh, it should be good adherence on the substrate. Mm -hmm. I see. Um, so I, I got another one question uh, in the chat box. Uh, Dr. Aslam Tambur is asking, uh, how will be controlled molecular weight of synthesized hybrid materials? He's asking. So sometimes it's difficult to control the molecular weight. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. I see. Because uh, it's uh, like uh, the dispersed state, uh, we should not, we cannot easily control. So, uh -huh. so the molecular weights are some problem. I see. I see. Uh, and he's again uh, asking another question: Is the hybrid materials are oligomer or polymer? This uh, hybrid materials have, uh, it's not exactly polymer; it's like oligomer. Oligomer. I see. Yeah. So, because so the molecular weight is not so high. Because mm -hmm. uh, simple click reaction happened and the polymerization is also high. Uh -huh. I see. I see. Uh, so actually, in the on the anti fogging uh, applications, so uh, still I have some, some doubt about. So suppose there is a fog in some uh, uh, in the room, suppose or in 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 airy area, and if you have the like suppose the anti fogging coating on our glasses, so yeah. will it uh, like Shall we, can we see through it or uh, what, what will happen in, in such an environment? It's easily penetrates the substrate. So when, if uh, the hydrophilic substrate has some good penetrable, uh, like some porous structures, mm -hmm. the dews uh, easily penetrates and uh, based on the climate, because uh, uh, at uh, cold condition, it's, it, it will not easily operate. So at hot condition, it's easily penetrated and operate the drop uh, folks so it can maintain the transparency and your, all properties and also the fogging is uh, completely wettable on the substrate. and it is uh, visible too yeah, yes but uh, it's based on the surface nature uh -huh. Uh -huh. so if it uh, have some hydrophobic it is easily visible but uh, highly hydrophilic it's not so visible easily yes. dispersed and we can easily clean out uh, from the substrate correct correct yeah uh, yeah so there is one another question whether uh, it is anti abrasion properties. So, yeah. one of the participants asked this question whether it is anti abrasion properties. Actually, abrasion test we didn't check. We just check the stability against uh, pencil hardness. So, it uh -huh. shows uh, a very good stable. Uh, it's like a high edge means uh, it's highly stable. So, uh, maybe it can show good abrasion resistance also. Uh -huh. Okay, uh, uh, with these questions, uh, yeah, once again, I uh, thanks Dr. Saran Nagapan for his uh, uh, excellent talk uh, in this uh, session. So, uh, thank you so much. Once again, yeah, thank you very much. Yeah. See you later. See you. Yeah, bye bye. Um, so, uh, we have the next session of the oral session. The oral session is uh, going to start. So, <clears throat> Before the oral session start, uh, I, I will uh, I have an important announcement for the participants who are giving the oral presentation. So uh, we are selecting six best poster presentation awards, and for this uh, awards uh, uh, we have appointed uh, the uh, reviewers for the oral presentation. So we have Dr. Abhijit Audumpur Yadav uh, from Rajasri Shahu Mah Mahavidyalay Latur. He is from Department of Physics. So he will be the one of the examiners for the oral presentation. The next examiner is Dr. Amit Suplai from Dr. Patangrao Kadam Mahavidyalay Sangli. 
The next examiner is Dr. Vasisht Gurme, Sri Sivaji Mahavidyalay, Barsi. Next examiner is Dr. Ajink Mohan More, KNBC Arts, Commerce and Vinayak Rao, Patil Science College, Kudwadi. Uh, the next examiner is Dr. Ramesh Devgate from Vidya Pratishthan's Art, Science and Commerce College, Baramati. And the last uh, review, uh, examiner is Dr. Rahintullah Khajasa Pinzari from Srimati Kasturbai Walchand College, Sangli. So these are the distinguished uh, examiners for the, uh, to assess your oral presentation and they will decide the best oral presentation. So uh, once again, uh, I'm uh, announcing that we are selecting best six oral presentation and the prize will be given like first prize, second prize, like that sixth prize. So uh, best luck for the all oral presentations. Uh, I request all the participants who are giving the oral presentation to be present when their oral present video is playing and two minutes time will be given to them for the question and answer. Okay, so once again, best luck uh, all the participants uh, who are giving the oral presentation. And with this uh, next day session, I will hand over to one of our uh, organizing committee member. He is uh, organizing secretary of the Sixth International Conference on Advances in Material Science. He is Mr. Rajaram Sutar. He is one of the dynamic faculty of uh, our department. So the next session, oral session is handled by Mr. Rajaram Sutar. So over to you, Mr. Rajaram Sutar, sir. Thanks to Dr. Sanjay Lette for giving this oral session. Uh, first of all, I welcome you all uh, participants in oral session. So I will start the oral presentation. Master Dr. Rajesh Bharati, Department of Physics and Electronics, Government Bureau Institute of Science and Humanities, Amrothi. Today I am presenting Complex Optical Investigation of Sodium Superoxide Loaded, Phosphoranated Glass System in Ultraviolet and Visible Addition. As we know that, conducting glasses has been broadly studied because of its various applications like batteries, memory switching devices, supercapacitors. The vanadium glasses have a great potential due to its advantages like generating various structural groups showing electrical and <coughs> optical properties. The V203, V205 glasses are more popular for their lower effectiveness and extraordinary optical properties. The preferable formation of sodium superoxide at the oxygen side is due to the transport limitation of gaseous oxygen through electrolyte free cathode structure. It is known that the sodium superoxide can be formed as a stable and solid compound. The sodium superoxide was filtered in a single step method by heating sodium nitrate in oxygen rich environment. The various given glass samples were prepared by using usual metaphysical method. In this, the AR red chemicals were red and mixed together. This mixture was homogenized and made in a speaker crucible at 900 degrees Celsius for 3 hours. After melting, the mixture was poured out onto an unmagnetic stainless steel plate. To avoid the internal strain, the sample was annealed at 200 degrees Celsius for 1 hour. The sample was characterized by using XRD and SIM. The UV spectrophotometer was used to record the complex optical properties of all prepared sample. The figure one shows the XRD of super super <coughs> sodium superoxide. The four peaks position appear in the pattern exactly in the sodium superoxide according to the JCPDS JCP data. This figure shows the XRD pattern of prepared glass sample. As there was no characteristic peaks corresponding to each crystalline phase, which confirms the formation of glasses. It is the same image of the glass sample. From saying it is clear that sample is with irregular granular morphology. From the absorption spectra, it is observed that the absorption spectra shows an intense Z in the wavelength region 222 to 230 nanometer and broad hum in the wavelength range 250 to 450 nanometer, which may be due to the charge transfer transition. 
from oxygen to sodium in NaO2. This figure shows the ratio of extension coefficient. It is observed that extension coefficient of all the glasses increases linearly up to 500 nanometer and it is to measure out at the offline. Beyond 500 nanometer, it almost becomes linear. The refractive index, prevention of refractive index is well in room temperature. It is observed that the sample has a low refractive index on the shorter wavelength side, whereas, whereas on the longer wavelength side, its value increases up to 340 nanometer. Beyond 340 nanometer, refractive index decreases. Also, it is observed that the increase of NU2 refractive index increases, which may be due to non rigid oxygen atom. This figure shows the plot of indirect band gap energy. It is observed that band gap energy varies in between 1.86 to 1.49 electron volt. It is observed that band gap becomes narrower with the, concentra with the increase of in concentration of sodium superoxide. The present work successfully reports the preparation of sodium superoxide loaded phosphonated glass system by metal quenching method. The prepared glass system has good quality amorphous phase, which confirmed through XRD study. The peak position appears in XRD pattern of prepared sodium superoxide exactly in next to the NO2. Of as prepared glass system shows intense absorption D in the prevalent region 220 to 230 nanometer. In the wavelength region, 300, and 400, 300 to 450 nanometer. The prepared glass system shows trapping of light, that is, extension coefficient is proportional to wavelength. Prepared glass has low refractive index on shorter wavelength side, whereas on longer wavelength side, its value increases up to 340 nanometer, and beyond it, refractive index increases gradually. These are some references used for the preparation of this research paper. Thank you. Thank you very much. Then should the ask your questions in chat box. Dr. Rajesh Bharati sir will give the answer of your questions. Question answer section has two minutes. One more participant has asking. Uh, Rajesh Bade, sir, you unmute yourself.
राजेश बर्डे सर Uh, sorry for uh, he is not present here yeah. so i will play the next uh, oral presentation video Uh, 
Then I go for a dial risk of this. And the figures for the AC connectivity of frequency relation of the preferred composite. Here the uh, AC connectivity curve for the need to be the preferred composite obtained at the room temperature. Actually, we can also change the maximum uh, connectivity value of the time to the power minus 8 was recorded at uh, 80% of the carbon black. It is uh, highly uh, high density quality. Uh, frequency in the one to two people from this. Then I will go for uh, uh, relative permittivity study of the board composite. Here the relative permittivity of the proper composite as a fraction of uh, frequency between the range and uh, 10 to the power minus 2 to 10 to the power from this at room temperature. Here also same that in the incorporation of carbon factors, the enhanced the relative permittivity value also. So uh, from this research, I will conclude. Concludes from part of time for from your research. Actually, the carbon particles by from the distributed with the composite matrix, the no corrosive law mesh or some unit semi matrix. And then uh, from the thermal properties, the thermal connective of the proper, proper composite are sitting to be input to the addition of carbon particles to the polymer matrix of the uh, high density poly. Uh, actually, uh, traumatic enhancement of the thermal oxidation of the stability of the composite. Uh, was the was the and then uh, from the article connectivity studies, uh, the, the carbon plus particles, uh, the addition of carbon plus particles, can can be uh, high, high level of energy conductivity, and also it's um, uh, carbon black material. So, Dr. Kanan Karthik, sir, you present here, please unmute yourself. So, Karthik, sir, is not presented here. Uh, so I play uh, next oral presentation video. I am Dr. Kalpna R. Nagre, working as Assistant Professor as Department of Physics, Institute of Science, Nagpur. And my topic of oral presentation is study of natural dyes for dye synthesized solar cell. So, before going into the detail of this paper, let's see the some brief summary about this paper. So, here a dye synthesized solar cell was prepared uh, using the extract of pomegranate, beetroot and the blackberry. So, when UV characteristics UV visible spectroscopy and JV characteristics were done. It was found that the natural dyes prepared with the blackberry use the maximum efficiency as compared to the other natural dyes that is the pomegranate and the beetroot. Now, let's see the fabrication process. For the fabrication process here, the paste was formed. 
Now, for this paste formation, the TiO2 and the ethanol was grinded in a smooth paste and the three drops of Triton X100 were added in the dye extraction. The so dye extraction was done for the beetroot, pomegranate and the blackberry. So, main part is how one can prepare the electrode. So, first we will see for the working electrode. So, for the preparation of the working electrode, the FPO glass plates were used and the TiO2 paste was coated on this FPO glass by using the doctor blade method. And this then this FTO glass were heated for 10 minutes and then both slides were heated at 300 degrees Celsius for an hour. And then these uh, FTO slides were immersed in the natural dyes and kept for 48 hours. So this is now known as the working electrode. For the counter electrode, this was prepared using the carbon soot. The electrolytic solution was prepared by taking the 0.1 molar lithium iodide and 0 0.05 molar iodine in acetonitrile. Now, was formed using the assembly in which the working electrode and the counter electrode was assembled by a paper clips with a spacer between the electrodes. And then the two layers of the scotch tape were applied to the working electrode. Then the two three drops of the electrolytic solution were added in between the counter and the working electrode. Then the slides were clamped together and the contacts were taken out from it. Now this is the process how one can form the disynthesized solar cell. Now let's see the characterization. Here we have used the three characterization techniques. First is the XRD. Here we have used the pyretical expert machine. Then JV characteristics using the digital multimeter and UV visible spectroscopy in the diffuse refractance board. Now, let's see the result and discussion. In result and discussion, one can see the XRD patterns of FTO glass and the TiO2. If you see this figure 1A, 1A and B carefully, we can see that all these peaks are matching with that of the standard DCPDS data of FTO and TiO2. Here, a TiO2 was found in the tetragonal Phase. Now, for optical study, we can see the absorption spectra of TiO2 plus pomegranate, TiO2 plus beetroot, TiO2 plus blackberry, and the bare TiO2. So, from this optical study, one can clear that all graph shows the absorption in the UV region of respective FTOs. If we can see the figure 2a, b, and c clearly, indicates that with the addition of these dyes, its absorption has been increased in the visible region. Also, it is also seen that TiO2 absorbs the less invisible region by itself, which can be shown in figure 2D clearly. So, a lump also has been observed at the wavelength corresponding to 560 nanometer in case of TiO2 plus blackberry. A non-zero absorption peaks is also observed in the spectrum of the pair TiO2 and which is attributed to the diffuse reflection of TiO2 suspended in the solvent. And the last study is the JV characteristics. So one can see the characteristics of all the natural dyes with the TiO2 in this diagram. So one can see clearly that the solar cell sensitized by the blackberry dyes gives the better performance as compared to the other natural dyes under study. All the photochemical parameters of these fabricated dye synthesized solar cells were calculated from the JV characteristics and when we see these parameters, one can clearly see that the TiO2 plus blackberry type natural dyes give the maximum efficiency followed by the beetroot and the pomegranate. So this is all about the dye synthesized cellar cell which is prepared using the natural dyes. So thank you, thank you very much for listening. So audience, uh, you have any questions please ask. Kalpana Nagade Madam is present here. Uh, Kalpana Nagade Madam, please uh, unmute yourself. Okay, thank you, sir. 
okay well uh, i am audible am i audible yes, yes ma'am okay audience please ask any uh, you have any questions in chat box okay there are uh, no any questions uh, thank you madam for your presence okay thank you, thank you very much sir so i will play a next video discussions uh, here we have estimated the dipole moment uh, the, that is nothing but mu c is nothing but 0.052 uh, days as well as the remaining are the thing with the existing dipole moments computation studies from the theoretical calculations using gaussian 1600 program we have estimated the dipole moment as well as polarizability and frequency modes obtained from dft studies and the table for uh, gives the existing dipole moments using pdd dft and zinder method Uh, these are the structures: optimized geometry of 4 MPMMC with a dipole moment vector, along with uh, electrostatic potential map of 4 MPMMC with counter action. Conclusion: We studied the effect of solvents on photophysical parameters for newly synthesized dye molecule, both by experiment and theory. It is observed that the dye molecules undergo positive solvent formation with increase in solvent quality, indicating the involvement of pi to pi star transition. Experimentally and theoretically, it is observed that the values of dipole moments are higher in the first existing state uh, 
than in the ground state. From microscopic spore quality parameter, the change in the movement of the dye is estimated. Estimated ground uh, ground dye density development using compression methods. This is the first report on extensive study of photophysical characteristics of biologically active dye, which helps to understand the uses of dye in various process applications as well as in the field of medicine. These are the references used for the research work. Uh, I thank the UGC BSR for providing BSR fellowship as well as UCIC, Google Institute, and Department of Physics MSRT member for research experimental characteristics. Thank you. So, if uh, anybody has the uh, question, so they can ask. Um, uh, so, I'll just see the Onkar part is Omnath, um, Omnath. Okay, Omnath, uh, it is correct. Uh, Omnath, uh, Dr. Omnath Patil. Yes, sir. Yes, sir. So you have yes, sir. I'm question. here only, sir. Uh, you have one question from the Aslam Tambori. So he's uh, asking yes. type of polar aprotic or protic solvent affect dipole moment. What is your answer? Yes, sir. Definitely it affects the polar aprotic and protic solvents effects. Mm -hmm. Dipole moment, sir. No, no. They are, he is asking what type of uh, polar aprotic or protic solvent affect. So, what are the types of affecting the uh, dipole moment? Uh, sir, there is a absorption as well as uh, emission spectra. Mm -hmm. There is a shift in the uh, mm -hmm. protic and aprotic solvents. Okay. Okay. So, I hope uh, uh, Dr. Aslam Tambur has satisfied with the uh, Dr. Omnath Patil's um, answer. Okay. So, there are no more questions, uh, Dr. Omnath. Thanks. Thank you so much. Thank you, sir. Thank you so much. So, um, we are going for the next uh, oral presentation. So, next oral presentation is OP5. Okay. So, next oral presentation is OP5. So, I'm just sharing the presentation. Um, so, next pre presentation, please note that it is OP5. Presentation number is 5. First of all, I would like to thank the organizer of this conference for giving me opportunity of the oral presentation for the title paper, Synthesis and Characterization of a New Diamide a building block of organosoluble polymer. As we know, polyamides are the important class of high performance engineering thermoplastic. Due to the uh, characteristic properties of high thermal stability, good mechanical strength, good chemical resistance, and high dimensional stability, these high performance polymers find applications in automobile and aerospace uh, industry. It, it can be also used for preparation of high strength and flame resistance fibers. Due to high aromatic content, these polymers are very rigid and they are possessing high melting point. They have high glass transition temperature and they are sparingly soluble in aromatic solvent. So they cannot be processed by melt processing method or solution casting method. So due to high glass transition temperature and insolubility or infigibility, they are processed. So worldwide efforts are directed to increase the solubility of polyamides by structural modification of polymers. So it can be achieved by incorporating flexible links like ether, methylene groups into the polymer backbone the chain packing and it allows the free rotation of the polymeric chain so that the polymer intactability or polymer uh, chain packing will be reduced and polymer can be soluble or become processable so in this present research work our research efforts are directed to modify the structure of the monomer by 
disturbing the regularity and by disturbing the chain packing and to provide the better solubility and processability to the polymers. So this monomer, which is a diamine, it is synthesized in this research. So this monomer containing flexible ether and methylene linkages, it is obtained from a raw material like para-chloronitrobenzene by nucleophilic substitution reaction with para-hydroxyphenyl acetic acid. Firstly, it gives para-nitro acid. This para-nitro acid on oxydianiline produces a dinitro compound containing flexible ether and methylene linkages. This dinitro compound on reduction in presence of palladium charcoal, it produces a diamine which is containing ether and methylene linkages along with amide and six benzene rings. So it is having high aromatic content also and it is having flexible rings and flexible groups also. So this monomer is obtained in high yield and its melting point is 240 degrees centigrade. So this monomer is characterized by various spectroscopic methods. So here dinitro compound a peak at 1341 and 1521 is observed due to a symmetric stretching of NO group. And this peak at 1341 is disappeared in diamine compound. A peak at 3131 is observed, additional peak due to NH stretching of amide. From of this diamine shows 14 different peaks for 14 non-equivalent carbons. This diamine is also characterized by TEPT to observe the peak at down, downside peak is observed due to methylene proton. The mass spectrum of this diamine shows a PYZ ratio at 651, shows that molecular weight of this polymer, this monomer is C40H35, that molecular weight of this polymer, this monomer is c 40 H35O5N4, which is M plus 1 ion peak. And this monomer can be utilized to produce this type of polymer, which is containing flexible ether and methylene linkages, which improves the solubility and processability of the polymer. In the conclusion, I want to say that a diamine, which is new, it contains a flexible linkages and Preform amide groups with six benzene ring is successfully synthesized and from some measure. Actually, um, Arti, uh, Dr. Arti Dute, ma'am. So uh, I'll just check whether Dute, ma'am, is there. Uh, Arti Dute, ma'am, uh, please uh, unmute yourself and we enjoyed it. Uh, uh, actually, we enjoyed the, enjoyed the, uh, the music background you have given to your uh, presentation. Uh, really, uh, we thought that uh, this was the sound coming from our system, but no, it was from the video. Uh, so it is, uh, it is for just for the information for the uh, uh, participants. So, uh, Dr. Aslam Tambur is asking you, how do you improve flexibility of the polymer? Hello. Good Hello. afternoon, sir. Yes. Am I audible? Yes, you are audible. And uh, yes, sir. the question for you is the how will you improve flexibility of the polymer? Yes, flexibility of polymer can be improved by uh, incorporating this type of oxygen means which is ether linkages and methylene linkages. Ether linkages give chance or opportunity for the hydrogen bonding. If we are comparing this type of monomer with uh, uh, aromatic monomer, completely aromatic or wholly aromatic monomer. So wholly aromatic monomer is very rigid and their interchain packing is very high. So it is not flexible and it is not soluble in a common organic solvent. So by uh, incorporating 
ether and methylene linkages it gives the uh, flexibility to the monomer and this monomer can be utilized for the polymer formation and it uh, in turn improves the solubility of the polymer also thank you sir uh, thank you uh, dr arthi duty ma'am um, so uh, we will go to the next uh, uh, presentation so the next presentation the oral presentation number is op6 so please uh, remember that this is the op6 now we'll start very good morning to one and all present over here I am Dr. Pradeep Pastaykar from the Department of Physics of Sri Lanka Patel Mahavidyalaya, Mandar, Nagpur. Uh, my oral presentation number is six, and uh, I am going to present my research paper entitled as Synthesis and Luminescence Study of Near UV Excitable TM3 Plus Activated Blue Phosphor. Now, luminescent materials are commonly called as phosphor and have been widely used in fluorescent lamp. eco-friendly led devices field emission display plasma display panel cathode ray tube and other display related devices now these days there are growing demand for a new phosphor in the industries to improve the performance of lighting or display devices and therefore the development of new luminescent material is the need of the hour on account of this we have prepared tm3 plus doped electro o3 phosphor now talking about the host electro3 it is highly stable material it is cheaper than other rare earth oxides uh, it shows low toxicity it has a high excitation efficiency and it shows long luminescence lifetime now moving towards synthesis part the phosphor is prepared by uh, coprecipitation method in which initially stoichiometric amount of electro o3 and tm2 o3 were taken in a separate beaker and then converted them into a nitrate form then both solution were mixed in a single beaker and stoichiometric amount of oxalic acid solution was added into that mixture so that precipitate was obtained in the form of oxalate then the obtained precipitate was filtered dried and heated at 1000 degree centigrade for 3 hours so that tm3 plus doped electro o3 phosphor was obtained Uh, this is the xrd analysis pattern of electro o3 phosphor uh, the upper one is the xrd pattern of prepared material and if you look at that figure then that pattern is in good agreement with the standard icdd file 831345 this is the crystal structure of electro o3 uh, electro o3 belongs to hexagonal crystal family with space group p3m1 Uh, there are two inequivalent oxygen site here represented by o1 and o2 and la atom is bonded with seven oxygen atom three uh, o2 atom and four o1 atoms this is the photoluminescence spectra of tm3 plus doped electro o3 phosphor uh, the black curve indicates uh, the black curve is the excitation spectra uh, it shows two excitation band Uh, picking around the main excitation band band peak picking around to 30 nanometer is due to the host excitation band and another excitation peak is at uh, 3 to 3 nanometer it is attributed to uh, the transition from 3h6 to 1d2 level of tm3 plus ion the blue curve indicate blue curve indicates the emission spectra of uh, prepared phosphor uh, it shows Main, uh, it shows main excitation peak. Uh, main emission peak uh, is at 457 nanometer. Uh, it is due to the transition from 1d2 to 3f4 uh, level of TM3 plus ion, and uh, there is additional small peak, uh, small emission peak at 480 nanometer. It is attributed to the transition from 1g4 to 3h6 uh, uh, level of TM3 plus ion. this is the energy level diagram of tm3 plus ion uh, this is the color chromaticity uh, diagram of uh, for the prepared material the color the coordinates uh, are uh, x is equal to 0.155 and y is equal to 0.036 which is in good agreement with the standard uh, blue color phosphor uh, now 
now moving towards the conclusion part so we conclude that the lto3 phosphor was successfully prepared by coprecipitation method the xrd measurement uh, confirmed the formation of lto3 material pm spectra indicates the characteristic emission of tm3 plus uh, at uh, 457 nanometer which is in blue region uh, under uh, 363 nanometer excitation and from the spectral property it is established that the prepared phosphor uh, prepared phosphor has good potential as a blue light emitting phosphor for uh, near uv excited uh, wled application uh, this is all about my presentation thank you thank you very much Uh, yes, uh, thank you uh, for your uh, nice presentation. Um, we could have uh, muted you, but uh, I am not finding any question for you. So we are going for the next uh, oral presentation. So the next oral presentation number is OP7. So the next oral presentation is OP7. Okay, so I'll just share the screen. Uh, okay. Sir, Supervisor is Professor S. M. Hanbori Sir. First of all, I would like to thank ICMS Organizing Committee for giving me this opportunity to present my paper organized by Raja Ramarai Mahavidyalaya like College. My oral presentation number is 7. The title of my presentation is Solotochromic and DFT Computational Studies on Homo Lumo and MESP Surfaces of Cumbrian Dye. These are the outlines. Introduction. We have selected Cumbrian derivative for uh, study of our present work. Figure A denotes the molecular structure of 4A7MC Cumbrian derivative. Cumbrian and their derivatives represent a class of well known laser dyes in the blue green region. They have many applications in the field of science and technology. Salotochromic method is helpful in the estimation of crown and excited state hypermoment. Computational studies have been carried out using Gaussian 16 software. Materials and methods. Solvents which we have used for our present work are mentioned here. Instruments used for the record to record absorption and emission spectra are also mentioned here. Gaussian 16 software has been used to study theoretical work. Figure B denotes the optimized geometry of 4A7MC from semi empirical method at PMC6 specific set. The vector denotes the direction of the dipole moment. Solotochromic method involves these polarity functions, Lippert, Madega, Bakshi, Kowalski, Chamavalet equations. Here, these are the equations used to uh, determine the ground and excited state dipole moments. Equation 11 and 12 give the Camlet and Catalan expressions. Re coming to the results and discussion, here, figure 2a denotes the absorption spectra, where absorption maxima shifts to shorter wavelengths corresponds to blue or hypochromic shift. Figure b denotes the fluorescence spectra. From fluorescence spectra, one can find that pi, to, pi to pi stars transition corresponds to red or orthochromic shift. Here, table 1 denotes the calculated values of polarity functions. Table 2 gives the Values of stroke shift arithmetic mean of wave numbers of 4A7MC. Here, these figures denotes the wave number versus polarity function, that is, Lippert, Matega, Bakshu, Kawaski, and microscopic solvent polarity equations. The number of data points are fitted to a straight line. Table 3 gives the correlation coefficients. Table 4 gives the values of radius, ground, excited state, and change in dipolement. We can see that excited state dipolement is higher than the ground state. Table 5 gives the Camlet and Ketlon solitochromic parameters. Equation 13 gives the Camlet equations, whereas alpha, beta denotes the hydrogen bond donor and hydrogen bond receptor ability, which have more influence than pi star, that is non specific dielectric interaction. Equation 14 gives the Ketlon equations, where solvent polarity, solvent dipolarity have more influence than the solvent acidity and basicity. Homo-lumo surfaces have also been studied in gas phase and DMSO. The energy gap and calculated values of chemical hardness have been shown in table 7. Small values of these to indicate molecule is soft. Homo-lumo energies are, have also been mentioned for different energy levels of homo-lumo, which have been shown in table 6. Figure 4 shows the different structures of homo-lumo in different levels. 
Millikan's atomic charges have been studied in gases and DMSO. Uh, with the help of these charges, we can study the different molecular properties. MESP map has also been studied in gas phase and DMSO. MESP map is very helpful in determining electrophilic and nucleophilic sites. Different values of electrostatic potentials are represented by different colors. Here, figure C and D also MESP map in DMSO. Here, uh, they have two phases. One is positive and negative phase, both in C and D figures. ESP is the measure of electronegativity and partial charges of the molecule. Conclusions, solidochromic shift method has been used to study ground and excited state dipole moments of coumarin derivative. Excited state dipole moments are higher than the ground state dipole moment, denote pi to pi star transition. Change in dipole moment also have been studied from microscopic solvent polarity parameter. Theoretical studies have been carried out to investigate molecular properties such as molecular charges for molecular MSP maps. I would like to acknowledge the financial support under DST PhD Fellowship from Karnataka Science and Technology Promotion Society. I am also grateful to Government Science College for providing fluorescent spectrometer. Some of the references I have mentioned here. Once again, I would like to thank for giving me this opportunity to present my paper. Thank you. So, this is uh, Siu Lila B. Uh, so, Siu Lila, if uh, she is available. Uh, Siu Lila B. So, I'm unmuting you, uh, Siu Lila. Um, yeah, can you hear me, Siu Lila? Hi. Hi. So, uh, I, I have uh, one question arrived in chat box. Uh, so, he, Aslam Tamul is asking you, what about N to pi transition? <clears throat> Sir, basically uh, we have uh, determined here pi to pi star's transition. Hmm. N to pi star means uh, from uh, ground state to excited state, sir. Uh -huh. Transition. So he is asking about. Uh, I mean, I don't know how he. Um, I mean, what is his intention of asking? Uh, I mean, uh, not to know about the basic. I think his intention is not to uh -huh. know about the basic, but uh, what happens in case of US? Uh, he is saying. In, in case of your mm, uh, sir but we we have uh, here we have observed for our uh, compound uh, that is pi to pi to pi star transition mm -hmm. uh, from mm -hmm. uh, ground state to excited state mm -hmm. so what uh, will happen to the uh, dipole moment mm -hmm. that we have determined here sir i see okay uh, i hope the uh, aslam tambur has satisfied with your uh, answer thank you thank you uh, thank you sir thank you sir Okay, so we have a uh, next oral presentation, oral presentation number eight. Okay, so we are starting the oral presentation number eight. Okay, this is uh, the audio is not from the video. Okay, don't uh, chat like there is no video uh, audio or like that because it is the recorded video and when the uh, actually the presenter should uh, start okay uh, but in the video only there is no song uh, otherwise I, I might have get a number of chats saying that there is no audio or video okay okay now there it is starting Myself, Anand Subhash. Today I present paper Negative Susceptibility of Nanoparticle Size and Aluminum Substitute Copper Provided. Right? In the 6th International Conference on Advanced Material Sciences from 24 to 24 April 2011. Uh, my presentation number is 8 and my, I am from Sanyesh Wallace Fulham. Now these are the types of the that magnetic materials, magnetic, paramagnetic, ferromagnetic, anti ferromagnetism. Now these are the methods, these are the steps to prepare these uh, ferrites with the help of that method, pre-sintering, milling, pellet formation and precision, final sintering, polishing. And the pellets and torates are polished by using soft metal 
sand paper so that they can out the parallel to each other. Now, characterization of this that uh, correct sample that is one is the x ray. With the help of x ray, we uh, observe that there is the lattice constant A is nothing but increases with copper content as increases, and lattice constant C is decreases with copper content increases. And in this case, there is the uh, with the help of that x ray, we observe that. Uh, well defined with 3 1 strong reflection peak, which is important to the screen structure. And close agreement of the algorithm taker portrait value suggested that indexing the planes of the appropriate. All index planes and lattice parameter values suggested that all the compositions are FCC cubic spinner. The protogram do not show any ambitious reflection suggesting the single stage establishment of their samples. That is constantly increases linearly with increasing copper ion and that for different aluminum concentration contained in the host lattice. This is the formula for this preparation of this direct sample. And the linear dependence of AO being derived from the is by the confirming the formation of homogeneous solid solution. All the prepared parts is observed that C is greater than A and tetragon ratio C upon is going to be reached. Of the 1.03 to 1.07, and in this present report, the term ratio of the copper tide is 1.06. It means 70% of the copper resides on the B side and it exhibits the product tide distortion in the crystallis. Therefore, copper cobalt tide exhibits a term spin structure in the post crystallis of the copper tide. In addition, of aluminum is contained, copper containing to the ratio is going to be increasing. It means that aluminum fibrous suppresses the tetragon cobalt type distortion of this case. And that means we are say that the tetragon is similar to the distortion transformation is occurs. With the help of the Fourier transform in Fourier studies, we say that there is a two bands are observed. One is tetrahedral at A side at the 600 centimeter inverse, and another band is also at the 400. Uh,